Hello there! From behind the yellow line, this is Tramon episode 70. My name is Kirk, and for once, I'm joined by my favorite listener and immersion breaker, Kimmy. Hi! Our Big Thunder topic of the week is immersion. Someone please write in a better way to transition. Honestly. (laughs) Roll the intro. Hello everyone! Welcome aboard Tramon, a Disneyland podcast. Please lower your head and watch your step while boarding. As a courtesy to other passengers, we ask that there be no eating, drinking, or smoking on board. In just a few moments, we will begin our trip into the Disneyland Resort News and Topic of the Week. Ladies and gentlemen, this tram is ready to depart. Driver, you are clear. Welcome back to Tram and everyone. Happy Wednesday. We're your hosts, Kirk and Kimmy. Hi. What's up, Kimmy? Uh, not much. This is new for me. I'm really scared. The newish. You've been here before. Yeah, but Rain was here, so it, it, it was like a flow. I was the third person, and now I feel... But he's here in spirit. These are his headphones. But right. I was there last time. Yeah, but so. these are his headphones. Yeah, that's I, true. I swapped them just oh. to, to keep things sacred. Oh, that's true. You know? Yeah, so I'm nervous but excited. I found out last night I was doing this, so... For the Tramon listeners that love rain, I'm sorry. <laughs> He'll be back next week, I promise. This is like a one-time thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, rain is fine. Uh, he got caught up at work during recording day, and he is at Disneyland right now on Tuesday. So, he's going to be up late recording. So, everyone give a little thank you to rain. Editing. And, yeah. Did, what, did I say recording? recording yeah. ah, okay. <laughs> He'll Whatever. be editing. We're recording now. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's clean up all these mistakes with... Mousekeeping. If this is your first time here, that's a little bit weird because we're missing Rain, my co-host. And, well, that's fine. He'll be back and you get, you you got, so you have 69 plus one episodes to listen to before this one if you'd like. So welcome aboard Tramon, a Disneyland podcast. I'm going to try to do this spiel without messing it up. So where Kirk and I talk about the Disneyland Resort through our eyes. If you enjoy the show, like, subscribe, comment, and review us wherever you can on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And my personal favorite is Overcast. Shout out to Pocket Casts. Overcast is what I use. Uh, you can follow at Tramon Podcast on Twitter and Instagram for dumb tweets and a visual guide of the show. And you can find all these links and more at Tramon.com. We, we should probably put in something like you can write into the show on Instagram. Too. You can. Yeah. On the on Instagram messaging. Has anyone ever tried to message you on Twitter? No. I, I send you dumb memes. Maybe, That's all I do. Maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> and then you got an emails before, too, right? Yeah, we've gotten emails yeah. at Tramon Podcast at gmail.com. There you go. But all these links are at Tramon.com. I mean, I think so. Let's let's hope. So. I I haven't been on that website in a while, so I don't know. Yeah, it, it doesn't. I mean, it does update. But anyways, yes. Any yeah. any ways? It's time for your right, in which members of the Tram Fam write in with corrections and comments. Kimmy, cue that corrections music. Okay. <laughs> Brent thought of us when he saw the "I Conquered the People" mover hat. Is that at Walt Disney World? It is or at Disneyland? Disneyland for some reason. Why? It is at World of Disney and it is at Star Trader. You did point it out. You're like, isn't that funny? It's people. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like that's that's con- like, that's just like terrorizing us. Like, oh guys, like or haunting us is the word I want to yeah. use. Like, just I conquered the people mover. Did you though? Did you? Did you do it while you were here or when you were yeah. traveling across the country? When was it exactly? Elizabeth is feeling robbed of a Tramon story that she might hear one day. <laughs> But I feel like this is a pretty good consolation prize. Oh, dear. <laughs> and she means a Tramon story, not the Tramon story, not, not, not the Tramoneering yeah, story. It's, it's another story. Fill in those blanks. Yeah, you it's guys like, will... like Rogue One, you know? It's Rogue a... One's before, though. No, but it's it's a it's a story. No, it's their prequels story. are the are the first thing. Don't That's forget true. the That's prequels. That's true. It's like in the middle. So, yeah. Just don't fill... don't don't disrespect it's, it's... the prequels. I'm oh, sorry. Right? Just fill in those blanks. You guys will figure it out. <laughs> Christian with a K writes in, Moana is supposed to be general Polynesian. Like, kind of like, um, where did I, like Raya. Like yeah. where it's a mix. So, uh. Yeah, Raya's not specified to one country. Yeah. She's like a mix of, yeah. Maui is a common demigod of all of Polynesia, Polynesia but they don't like worship him. He's kind of like Loki. So he is a folklore hero 
but he is also a god of mischief. Okay, I don't know enough about Loki and Thor, like outside of the Marvel Universe. Are they worshipped at all? Like Thor? I think just like... Or they I, don't, like I don't know if they're like worshipped at, or honored. Or I don't know if they're worshipped at all. Odin, maybe. But they're like gods that are feared. Okay. Yeah. But uh, Loki is definitely not worshipped and neither is Maui. They're, they're gods of mischief. So okay. that's fun. Yeah. Um, so it includes Hawaii, but it's not strictly Hawaiian. He also says there is a collector's warehouse in Guardians. So because we said like, oh, it's, that's not really. Is that really the collector's warehouse? Or he's like, it's close enough. You know, it's Wait, not like in the movie or just it's his collection. Oh, so it's kind of like the T-Von collection, multiple locations, but it's you kind of feel like you're there. So it's close enough. It yeah. does kind of match the vibe. Yeah. So and, you know, it's not really part of the MCU, so that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you wrote in yeah, Amy, and you said, call me by your name was one of your favorites until Army Hammer started eating humans. <sighs> I have a lot of issues now with that movie for a lot of reasons, but I will say the soundtrack is still superior. So I will listen to that soundtrack any day. And Ozzy writes in, loves Planet Coaster. Planet, what's, oh, the, talked, the video game? Yeah, he I, says he has it and he, he's addic he used to be addicted yes. and has tried to make Disneyland multiple times. Ooh, yeah. That's cool. That's All right. Cool. So let's get into some news. We're sticking with the headlines. I like, I like, it's a creative <laughs> challenge for me. I get to be more creative. Sticking with the headlines? What do you mean? Like, you know how I write headlines now? Yes. I'm doing, I, I was like testing it out, quote unquote. Oh, you weren't doing that before. This was like two weeks ago. Oh. That I started this with, uh, you know, the Coco thing and all that. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's true. I've never seen your notes. So this is my first time looking oh, right. at your notes. That's but why I I'm read the headlines out loud. So, okay. number one. Oogie Boogie Blunder. The tickets for Oogie Boogie Bash, which is back, went on sale uh, last Tuesday at mm -hmm. 9 a.m. And the verbiage before that was no earlier than 9 a.m. Yeah. So everyone was kind of like, all right, 9 a.m. That's, yeah. Well, you said a lot of people were like, they didn't say 9 a.m. And it's like, mm, but they did. But they said, they just said not before. So they don't said, log yeah. in at midnight is basically what they were trying to say. Yeah. So, so uh, let's see. The I got tickets in like, 20 minutes mm -hmm. uh, i had one error but i actually backed out and then i went through on the first try but what time did you log in you logged in earlier than nine like two minutes before yeah because i tried logging in i was like on my phone though because my i can't i couldn't get oh. access to it on my laptop so so i actually had it open mm -hmm. the ticket page it automatically refreshed itself and like five minutes before and put me in the queue so here's what's interesting they were still using the tada dot q it net or whatever it was so it's the same queuing system but they use a new billing system that wasn't disney's account system yeah and that threw a lot of people off because people suddenly had to pull out their cards or find things like so yeah you, you had 10 minutes to complete everything and once you got to the purchase page you had five minutes yeah and i use bitwarden it is a password and information manager it's encrypted and open source i highly recommend it i have my credit card in there so i just copied all the data mm -hmm. And uh, which you might be able to do on like Chrome and stuff. But no more. No more Chrome for me. Yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, a lot of issues there because being logged into your Disney account did nothing. It, it did nothing. And then people just got lucky. Like you were in and out in 20 minutes. I left mine open. Just yeah, just leave it open. And then my cousin called me and she was also in line. So I got in line for her. She got in before me technically. And she logged in. She every time she hit the payment page, they would kick her out or say error. She did it three times and then the line f stopped completely. It said more than I think. I don't even think it said pause. I think it said more than an hour. That's all it said. But Twitter was like, no one's getting in right now. Turns out she was charged three times. And then did they drop off, though. A lot of pending she, charges. She called me yesterday or she texted me yesterday telling me that they finally dropped. So it took a few days. Yeah. Well, they always take They'll yeah. take your money real I, quick. I'm not sure, though, if the bank disputed it, because some people on Twitter said they called their bank to dispute it. But I don't know if eventually the billing people just like not Disney, but whoever, because that was the issue, too, is people were calling with errors. And Disney was like, we, we don't we have no control over the billing. So you got to we got to just wait and hang tight. I think that's why they paused it, because like I think even their phone lines were down. People couldn't get through. Yeah. And well, here's the thing about pending charges. You can call your bank as much as you want and they might like just to calm you down, say, yeah, 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 we'll reverse it. They can't do anything until the charge posts. Mm, so okay. basically like, oh, we'll reverse it if it posts. But up until the charge is a 
posted transaction. If it's pending, no one can do anything because it'll probably just go away. It usually does. Kind of like, uh, you know, they charge you the dollar for like when they test out your reservation. Like the gas station and stuff that's in that to me. Mm-hmm. They Yeah, gas stations put a hold and all that. But yeah, so, but everyone who was there day one basically got what they wanted because there weren't any sold out dates till later. I think the 30th was the first day sold out. And it took like one or two days for that yeah, to happen. So yeah, so if, if you really wanted it, you got it. Yeah. Uh, and so it's really just the luck of the draw because their uh, Valve, which runs Steam, the place where everyone on computer slash PC gets their games, released a pre-order thing for a console. Mm-hmm. And you can only get in if you already have an account that's old. So no bots, none of that stuff. RJ logged in really early and he kept getting aired out, whatever. And I'm like, what does this website even look like? And like, I went through, it was 35 minutes after it posted. And I just like got through and bought one. I guess it just depends. Yeah. No, like Like, I just, I waltzed in and it just worked on the first try. And then I got like the first batch of them and I'm just going to give it to him. He's going to pay me. But But like you get lucky though, because you've gotten our, all our boarding passes. Like, I mean, not, I know you're going to talk about Disneyland another day, but even when we went on Saturday, you got, immediately got our boarding groups for Spider-Man and then f- you got group one and 27. Well, okay. For that, that's, and that was from home. That wasn't, you know, so my home download speed is fast and my, in, my work is even better, but mm-hmm. like, I think a lot of it is at least with the boarding passes, people hesitate. You got to mash, you got to oogie boogie bash that join button. <laughs> you just, if you see a blue button, you hit it. Yeah. And unless there's some weird issue, it, your tickets are auto selected. Now, it might be weird the second time we go because I heard there's an issue there, but like just don't load your account up with tickets if you're not going to use them. Mm -hmm. Just use the ones that are going to be there. Um, And I don't know if this is true, but like internet has latency issues, browsers have weird issues, compatibility, ad block, tracking protection, all that stuff. I have all that off for certain websites. And also, even though people's charges went through, It could have been some weird thing with like if people use debit cards or certain cards. I always use my Amex for this stuff. Yeah. And Amex, unless it's Amex doesn't like Target for some reason, but unless it's Target, it lets me buy anything immediately. Like when I went and bought our tickets from AAA, it was like six hundred dollars all at once, like with rain and brandy and everything. Yeah. And it just went through. And then I did it again and it went through because they'll just fix it later. So Yeah. There's a hundred different things it could be. But point is, if you wanted to go, you went. You're probably going to get your money back if there's some issue. But it doesn't sound like people actually got their money taken. No. I mean, I haven't heard anybody say, like, if I you, haven't gotten my refund or, oh, like, yeah, Disney it, is refusing to refund me or anything. But you can log in today and get a ticket in, like, two seconds. Like, now yeah. there's no queue anymore. Not that I've seen. Um, but, yeah, I think the only days I saw sold out, there were a few Sat- Saturday, a few September dates that were gone. I think both Saturdays were gone, the Influencer Saturday and the mm. uh, Halloween Eve, I guess you would call it. Um, I think I saw a lot of Tuesdays and Thursdays gone in September. I don't know if it's because of kids or they were, they were they were cheaper days. So Yeah, the cheaper days sell out. That's mm-hmm. just how it but is. But there were quite a few left in October. I was surprised. So yeah. it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Next item, cooking with character. Not really, though. Dining with characters. Uh, character dining is back. It's back. Uh, you can get reservations at Storytellers, Plaza mm-hmm. Inn, et cetera. Goofy's Kitchen's still closed. Yeah, who knows if they're expanding it, killing it. We'll see. They haven't really said. They, they're they killing Steakhouse 55, which is right next to it. I'm curious if they're going to make it They might just make some, some awesome big boy restaurant. You yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Goofy's Kitchen is dated. I've never eaten there. It's, I don't know. Forget the food or whatever. The, the characters are great, but it is ugly in there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so we when we when we walked by it last week, it was like covered, Tart, so yeah. you can't even really see it. So, so okay. we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. And then with that, also, Carthay Circle is opening in so indoors. Okay, so Carthay Circle said opening July twenty second. Mm-hmm. Reservations open July twentieth. Reservations are not open. I've been checking all day. Today is the. Tw- are, mean, you, are you sure? That, are you sure you just missed it though? I'm sure. You you checked all day. Okay. Yeah. And then what because else? Because it would, not every day would be sold out. The problem How much right in now, advance do they, is it 60, 60 days? days yeah. So between now and I think September yeah. 18th, the six days. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Here's the other thing. When you go to the Disney reservation page, mm-hmm. the on the website, not mobile, Carthay Circle is not in the reservations available page. Like reservations accepted. Hmm. And underneath it says 
dining information is not yet available. Check back soon. That's weird. Yeah, Do you so, think because it's it possible? would go in a list and say no dates available. It doesn't say that. I'm curious if they would just do a walk up only. No, they said reservations July 20 on the little blog. No, post. but I like if they too. ever were like to switch it, like do, would that be effective? Because that way people can just make them and then not claim them, you know? No, because they will have the walk up anyway. Yeah, they, they will never not have like a full night there. So they'll be fine. Sorry, I'm going to look this up. Go ahead. Yeah. Next headline. Tell me about it, stud. For some reason, studded <laughs> ears exist. Uh, I don't like this at all, but they're there. I don't know if they're Cruella. They're Cruella. Oh, they are? They are Cruella. Okay. Which we'll, we'll talk about later, but I, I did see that. But yeah. Yeah, they are Cruella, and it does fit that aesthetic perfectly. It's like 60s punk, so yeah. it does fit that aesthetic. All right. Next headline. Ananas split. Pineapple Dole Whip Sunday, or pineapple split Dole Whip Sunday is available at Tropical Hideaway. It's two servings of Dole Whip, a pineapple spear split in half, coconut flakes, berries, gummy butterflies, and the plastic Jungle Cruise boat for $25. I did That's see, expensive. I didn't look at the price. It's got the boat. Okay, that alone is probably like 15 bucks. 15, 16 bucks. So, but I, got, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there, it, there's estimated that there aren't, that they're limited, but I doubt it. Uh, the boats. I didn't see any on Saturday, but I'm sure they weren't sold. That was Disneyland's birthday. So, yeah, I, so I think we just didn't see it. Yeah. And, and th that line was long. Tropical Hideaway yeah. line was long. So we probably just missed it. Yeah, and for some reason, National Dole Whip Day was Monday. Yeah. And I asked, I asked anyone who was there, did they do anything? It looks like it was, I hate to say it, but it was just a day for Disney to be like, guys, get your Dole Whips and take a picture yeah, of them and it. And what I tweeted was, this is the type of thing you do when you have annual pass holders who will show up to Disneyland, buy a Dole Whip just to get some dumb button. Right. And then probably spend money elsewhere in the park and have dinner. Yeah. You don't do that when people bought their tickets two weeks in advance, reserved it, whatever, like pointless. Yeah, but it wasn't exclusive to Disneyland. I think it was all the Disney parks that sell Dole Whips because I saw pictures from like Walt Disney World. They have like a watermelon one. It looked really cool. I heard it didn't taste very well, but mm -hmm. they had like an orange one. The ones we have here, the raspberry orange. Um, also with the restaurants, um, it was also uh, Golden Horseshoes opening too. Oh, that's cool. That's July 29th. So. But n n but the show's not happening. It's just it's just the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. So it's for those of you wondering, in every language except like Spanish and English, ananas is pineapple. It's also that in Latin. It's like the official name for the, the species. What's banana in Spanish? <laughs> I'm the worst at this. Oh, I used to know. It's like a weird name. I'm Mexican, by the way, but I do not speak Spanish. So let's see. Let's see. This is hard for me. Let's see. I keep thinking of orange, not on that, but not um, banana. Platano. Pla yes. Yeah. Duh, they make like, 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 like plantain. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, something <laughs> down here says la banana. I don't know what that means. That's the Spanish way to say it. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Then and the last one, which I'm excited about. Last one. Hit. Hall to the chief. Hall of Presidents will debut President Joe Biden's audio animatronic next month. Also featured his signature aviators. Mm -hmm. And Amtrak tickets, if I'm not mistaken. And then his, the dandelion or something? Or what was it? Whatever. His, the state he's from, that state flower. Oh, I didn't see that. I don't think it's a den. Line. Oh, whatever it is. Yeah, I will say um, I'm not going to get political. I'm not talking about politics right now. I was impressed by how much better this one looked. Like it looks like well, him. It wasn't a or the last one Hillary looked, Clinton. One. Yeah, it looked really bad. And I'm not <laughs> making a political statement with that. I'm just saying though that like no, just, this one looks a more like it, it looks like an audio animatronic, obviously, but it looks more like him than other ones have like there's some that just look terrifying but his looks pretty good i think it opens in august august yeah sometime in august yeah. it, i don't have the date but yeah and people online already i saw somebody like edit joe biden like eating like an ice cream cone yeah. and then like the aviators it's just really funny but yeah. and then yeah. the previous president just gets shuffled off to the side with the other 45 presidents because that's just how it goes i was su not surprised i was i was I thought it was cool that they're going to put a table and put stuff that he's known for next to him, yeah. like aviators. Like, No, he's always wearing the now, aviators. Now I'm aware of it. Now I, I've seen him with them on, but now I'm like, oh, I guess that's yeah, that's, that's such a big thing. deal that Disney noticed it. Like, hey, we got to put aviators next right. to him. Like, don't, don't worry about it, you know? But I yeah. thought that was cool. And now it's time for... <laughs> so excited. 
Kev's concoctions with Kirk and Rain. So my brother Kev likes to make things. And uh, I'm sorry, Kimmy, but this week you have a beer. I Okay. <laughs> So you're going to try this. Fun year. fact, I do not drink, um, especially beer. I just, no hate to people that do. I just, I don't. So and she just doesn't is, like it. It's not I like I'm forcing just, her to drink I just or don't anything. like yeah. it. But. You do like the vanilla mango mule. I took like a, well, no. No, I no, you, you went back. That, that was good. That, that yeah. was good. Okay. All right. So to a weirdly special episode. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> God, I'm going to hide my face. Oh, this could have been worse. How much do you hate it? Listen, just I, I, your brother made it, so I don't want to. No, offend no, him. no. He loves when people I'm just hate saying, it. Just say it. I just brushed my teeth. Does that affect the taste of beer? <laughs> Take one more sip. Okay. God. I also brushed my teeth. I can't pinpoint the flavor. I'm okay. trying really hard to pinpoint it. So, That's my problem. It I is, can taste the alcohol clearly, but I'm trying to think there's something else going on. It is made with Trader Joe's watermelon cucumber juice. It's cucumber. I'm like, there's something weird, not weird, but different so, about this. So. Kev says it tastes like our mom's low effort turkey sandwich she'd make as a kid. It tastes like turkey. <laughs> and I was I was going to say some kind of lunch meat, but I didn't want to offend yeah. him, so I didn't no, say it. He says <laughs> yes. it, it's, it tastes like your mother's low effort turkey sandwich she'd make you as turkey. a kid, and it makes you question whether or not she genuinely loves you. So I would have sandwiches before with like thin sliced cucumbers in them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like the cucumber. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm That's drinking what a doing. sandwich is what, what it yeah. tastes like to me. <laughs> All right. Well, you can finish that. I'm done. Yeah. I have. Oh, yeah. I'm getting the turkey um, sandwich right here. I'm but mom, we love you. Thank you for making us lunch as children. I love those turkey sandwiches. Shout out to San Francisco French baguettes. They're not baguettes. They're rolls. Well, I think they're, I don't know what they are, but they're great. So it's time for our Big Thunder topic of the week. What's <laughs> Rain does that. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> Rain looks at the goat. I was going to go toot toot, but I forgot that was no, no, so no, I can't no, no. toot toot anymore. So. Uh, oh, wait, I, I forgot. I'm going to give you something terrible that my mom gave me. What is it? <laughs> you're, obviously, your favorite Star Wars character is Rey. So oh. here is a Rey spoon Ooh. that you can eat your breakfast with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I almost I almost used it this morning at work, and I'm like, ah. Wow. This will annoy. Yeah, it's, go ahead, open it. It's from a cereal. Yeah, I don't know if it's from cereal or something. By the way, write in if you use your teeth to open things because no, he doesn't. No, and no, I, yeah. I, uh, your 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 teeth are very sharp. It's very efficient. I keep looking at the monitor, so if you guys see me looking up, that's what I'm looking at. I'm sorry. Finger fitness, everyone. I used to, and I used to. Never mind. But okay, let me see. Um. Oh wow, that, like literally looks like her. That's actually really impressive. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god. And did you see what's on the actual yeah. spoon? Yeah, I did. Wow. Oh, I'm going to use this for wow. sure. No. So right now I eat my, I'm not even kidding. Every me every day for breakfast, I have oatmeal. I use the spork from, um, Galaxy's Edge. I did not steal it. So before the, I think now they're doing it again, they're but, selling but it before again, the yeah. pandemic, they were selling them, I think for like 10 bucks with the little sleeve. Mm -hmm. It's perfect for oatmeal, especially with toppings because it's like a spork. So you can still scoop it. And then you got like this little to get it. It's not great. It's not great as a fork on its own, but like for oatmeal, it's great. So I'm going to add this to the collection. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, I do want to say, since we, we reversed back mm -hmm. out of the Big Thunder topic for a second. Yes. Kev, this beer is good and also a turkey sandwich. It's, it's, I wonder what this would be like with a turkey sandwich. I think I... See, it's not a bad... Fl I don't... It's not bad. I just don't drink alcohol. So for me, it's like... I it I think no, the alcohol is, is like turkey. is like over... It's overwhelming the turkey with me. <laughs> I mean, there is no turkey in there. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> But anyways, anyways, let's get back into the topic. Let's, okay. let's, let's, we'll play it again. We'll okay. play it again okay. for everyone. Okay. Okay. Play it again. <laughs> Forgot to do it again. It's fine. All right. Our Big Thunder topic of the week is immersion. Immersion. With an I. Isn't that how you use this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking. I was staring at the fit. So uh, this is kind of when you forget you're on Earth. Not like you're in space. You just forget you're in reality. You're in a little touch of Disney magic. Yeah. So this wasn't, it doesn't matter. Radiator Springs Racers. Let's get right into immersiveness. First of all, everything is rock work. 
Yeah. They went crazy with the rock work. Mm -hmm. You are, you are in ornament Valley. You're, you're in a Canyon. You know, there's a, a thing in the middle. I think it's called a, a butt. Is that how you say it? I'm pretty sure it is. I'm not sure how to say it. I don't think yes. it's butte. I always thought it was butte. We're going with butt. Okay, it's some butt, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so you, you're you in the large outside, and you just came from Radiator Springs, and then you go inside. The, the initial part is like, it's okay, because you see some show lights on the top, like the, the when you get inside. Are you talking about when you first enter the yeah. building or like when you yeah. enter? Because I, I notice them more when I enter Radiator Springs in the in the in the ride. So you're more immersed because you don't see any any lights until you until Mac comes out. Mac, you know, the, the big truck, his name is Mac, right? Yeah. So you don't. And the first lights you see, I think, are his headlights, right? No, that, what I mean is like that room doesn't feel as immersive to me mm -hmm. because it feels small in there. But then when you go out of there, you go into Radiator Springs, right? Mm -hmm. That's where it's, even though it's small, mm -hmm. you're sitting and it still feels like you're there. Yeah. Like it feels like I'm hanging out with these cars. Yeah. And it's funny because I feel like when I overthink it though, I like, there's like this part of me that's like, I just walked this street yeah. and now I'm in the street again. Like, <laughs> But I think they, they move enough like the cars from cars. Where I feel like yeah, no, they're they're, there. they're great. They're yeah. really great for and are they considered audio animatronics? Because their think mouths so. kind of just open, and then their eyes are obviously animated. So yeah, I mean, I I like it. I like that you're in a a mini version of Radiator Springs. Yeah, it's great. And then you see um, the hip Fillmore, and I forget the guys, the Sarge or whatever, and they're just like the first things you see. It's really cool. Yeah. Hippie. Yeah, hippie. <laughs> and then yeah, and then even like the the, the b before that with the billboard. And what Doc? Yeah, I've seen the movie once. Um, Doc comes out and goes, "Slow down, you're not racing." Yet. It's like I don't know. It just sounds really cool. I yeah, <laughs> you're not racing yet. That that's not what bothers me. I'll get to what bothers I, me. You have issues with it. I know. yeah. Uh, but then you have Luigi's and Ramones, which this is still on the ride, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. No, we're we're only in the ride right okay, now. Okay, okay. And th those are cool. You don't again. You don't feel the, a common theme in this episode is going to be top to bottom theming. Mm -hmm. Where the ceiling is themed. Yeah. That's what's that's what changes these rides because kids are really hyper focused on looking at the characters, but adults look around. Yeah. And I, you look around and it doesn't feel like you're in a ride. I yeah, I would say when you go into Luigi's it feels like you're like in a it almost feels like a tailor shop when I'm in there. Yeah. It's like it's like a car's tailor shop. And then when you go to Ramon's it feels like a tattoo parlor, which that's kind of what it's modeled after. But yeah, yeah. you're but you're one of the cars, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. That so that's sense. pretty good. And then there's the race area and you're just back outside again. Yeah. Well, and it's great. Yeah. Right before there, what I hate is <laughs> you really hate when this. Doc says, I'm your new crew chief. I'm like you say that. Every I time. like it. I don't, I don't like know it. what's wrong no, because it just like it. it that's the one thing that takes me out of it where it's like you have accelerated pun intended <laughs> the story really quickly. It's just like, there's no story though. The story is you're prepping for a race. This isn't like a, I know, like, but it just feels like, Oh, you just got the thing. I'm your new crew chief. And then you're about to race. And it's like, it oh, okay. would bother me more if it was like snow white. Like, you know how they try to get the whole movie in one ride. Like this is just a, Hey, you're a car I know, but it's like, in this universe. Lightning McQueen just lives here now. Don't think, don't overthink it and just go. That's it. Yeah, I just he just bothers me. <laughs> you know what I like about that part though? I like that his voice changes because you hear him, oh, and then and you uh, hear him through the mic. So it's yeah. like come on, in, you know. But it, it it jumps back and forth between the two. So it'd be cool. I wonder. What? This has an update. I wonder if there are like effects, like a real time effect. That'd be cool. Yeah. Look that up later. I'll I'll send them yeah. feedback. Okay. Apparently they listen. Okay. <laughs> so uh, then you're back in the race area, mm -hmm. which again you're outside. For the most part, if you don't look down inside the track and see the system, again, you, you feel like you're in this large scale canyon, especially those like drastically banked turns. Yeah. You're you're like under. Mm -hmm. And it and it there's this like what's funny is you go right up against that walkway mm -hmm. where uh, flows is. Mm -hmm. Have you ever really looked out there or you're just focused on what's coming in front of you, right? Yeah, I mean, I'll kind of glance, but I don't notice spectators. Or I don't really look yeah. at people. I kind of look, I, I see myself looking at the sight line, which I maybe was intentional because I feel like we're slightly yeah. at level or slightly higher than and like crowd level. And we're tilted level. a little bit, I think. Yeah, 
And so yeah. this is one of those. And then you kind of go up and down too, sorry. Yeah. But like. This yeah. is one of those cases where you're outside in the theme park and it doesn't feel like you're in the theme park. You're in that ride only. Yeah. Unlike, let's say, in Credit Coaster, you see the tops of buildings yeah. and like that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So it's very, it keeps you immersed. Yeah. And it's a thrill ride without, yeah, you're right. It doesn't have high elevation, but it's got little, you know, drops going up and down the banking and then the, you know, and then you go in the caverns or whatever. So it's like, you're kind of, okay, you were there and now you're back here, yeah, it's, you know, it's a legitimate e-ticket. It's very like, self-contained, but yeah. like in a good way. Yeah. It's you're, you're on that ride the whole time. You're not anywhere else. You're not in California adventure. Like mm -hmm. you kind of forget and mm -hmm. in, in the best way. And where I kind of, did we do, we went to Disneyland last week, by the mm -hmm. way. Uh, stay tuned next week. So did we do Radiator Springs before Little Mermaid? That was the first or ride after? we did when we first walked. But, but oh. after Spider-Man, we went there because Where? we single rode it. Oh, okay. Radiator Springs. Yeah. So I don't know. This didn't really, this was part of the inspiration for the episode. But the caverns, I love the caverns at the end where you show up and it's, I wish it wasn't so short. I'm, mi you're, I'm you're mixed on it. I'm mixed on it because it looks like, is it supposed to look like car parts? Yeah. So that's why it, I'm like, it's kind of cartoony. That's my thing. It's uh, a little cartoony. A cartoon. Yeah. But like the rest of the ride doesn't feel cartoony to me. That's when it starts to feel cartoony so, for me. Cartoon. Cartoon. Car. Cartoon. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're fine. So, this was written for rain because we had this whole thing. Okay. But I read this and I was very confused. So you, you do it. You do it. There are stalagmites and stalactites. Stalactites. A stalagmite is a mound or tapering column rising from the floor of a cave formed of calcium salts deposited by dripping water and often uniting with a stalactite. And what is a stalactite, you ask? Maybe you didn't ask, but I'm telling you anyway. It's a tapering structure hanging like an icicle from the roof of a cave formed of calcium salts deposited by dripping water. So those are like tail lights. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. <laughs> but you feel like you're just, I feel like I'm in a cave. Mm -hmm. And then there's a cave drawing at the end, which I love. Where? On the right side at the end, there's a cave drawing. As if like cavemen did it, but it's their cars. So it's funny. I feel like I don't focus a lot on that room when I should. You know what I'm staring at, to be honest? Because you got Mater and you got Lightning right there. I'm staring at the track in front of me because it rotates. Oh, you look at that thing? I look at that thing because you know how, like, because there's, like, there's like two lanes because when you come in, you're racing another car. So like, that thing rotates. Look at this picture. That does look really pretty. Yeah. I guess we'll post Are those show lights on top? Yeah. They, the show lights. Did you take that picture? Uh, yeah, oh, wow, May, March 29th, 2018. Oh, wow. Yeah, I searched cave and that's what came up. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm looking for the drawings, which I can't find, but that's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, I just wish that, I know it has nothing to do with cars, right? But like, it's immersive and that's all I want. Are there caverns in the movie? I don't remember. I don't know, actually. Yeah. I can't find the rest of, the, of this. I'll try to find that. Well, picture. I know we're... You, we are at the end of the ride already, but I think my favorite part of the ride is the very beginning. What? Like, like, dun, dun. It's, like when you okay. see the waterfall, because I, w that's the thing. Your back is to the rest of the park. So you're already immersed in the, in the, in the rock work and you're already there. So it's like, I, okay. I, I, that's the, that's a rare ride where I immediately feel immersed. Yeah. Like you know immediately. I, and I, you're still outside. You're not even inside yet. I outside had, I'm immersed. I had this thought. I think I just didn't write it down mm -hmm. where even when they're telling you to put your seatbelt on, you kind of see some caves. You have the trees. Like you, you feel like you're like, it feels weird that there's a cast member there. They're but the even one. The cast members, like I, I do like their, their, their costumes. Ugh, those are the ugliest costumes. No, but like I'm saying though that like when she's checking you in, she's already wearing like that race look yeah. or, or or the one that helped us. She was a woman, but um, either are but like they, their outfits because they all have like those like almost kneeling shorts and then like a racer shirt but i'm saying though that that brings me into the immersion of the hey huh. you're about to do a race that's funny that's what i mean yeah to me it's like okay you need to just get out of here like i'm i'm on i'm in radiator springs i don't know what this human is doing here you know what gets me out of it though is that because you wear seatbelts like a car yeah and but the thing is like it's so tight because you know how like in your car you can kind of pull on it but you can't so like i found myself on um on Saturday, like trying to loosen it. I'm like, wait, I can't loosen this. <laughs> like uh -huh. it is, it's no longer a car anymore. It's like, I know there's literally a ride. And then you, you have that yellow tab to pull on. Maybe I pull it out extra or something. Cause it doesn't, it, 
yeah with me i don't know i usually feel fine mm. but uh yeah from beginning to end you just you feel like you're there yeah and i i, I think i just i think caves are just interesting so mm -hmm. maybe if it was longer it would just feel cooler but that whole entrance or the the like the entrance and exit out of the car or into the car even that's great even yeah. the stairs afterwards perfectly themed i think just leaving the key like well, you're going to talk about it next, but I, I say, I would say you would never really leave that feeling because even when you're exiting the ride, there's still that long walk up to the front of the attraction or up to the front of the line. I feel like even as you're exiting the ride, yeah, you're the so you, can, you can see the cars racing. You still have rock work all around you. You can still, you can see the queue, but that queue is really well themed. It's well themed. It's just boring. No, it's well themed until you actually hit where the line starts, which is usually like where the bottles are. Then that's boring. Yeah. But I'm talking about in terms of like feeling like you're in the in the rock. Like, yeah. Like yeah. it's They're really rocky. The like when you, as rock. Yeah. The, exactly. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I mean. Like that area. But then you you hit the rest of the cars land, mm -hmm. and it again doesn't feel too much like you're in DCA. I would argue when you're facing Radiator Springs Racer, yeah. when you're facing back out. It's not bad, though, because you have Blue Sky Cellar. <sighs> yes, and that's just a wall of green. So it stands out to me because the rest of Cars Land is really orange. <laughs> I just see nature. Except for so flows. Like, except for yeah, flows. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the rest of it's really well themed. Um, like, I think my favorite building that's been empty this whole time or that hasn't been open is across from flows. I forget what it's called. But they have that wall of, like, all the license plates and stuff. Yeah. I love that. It's one of my favorite areas. Yeah, I forgot what it's called. Oh, but I think it was, was it a shop before? It, yeah, yeah, it's a shop. Because like, right it now it's still, it's still, it's still see, yeah, curios or something. And but now it's still um, seating. So people, I think I saw ch tables oh, up on the porch on Saturday. Yeah. yeah, that that looks really good during Halloween, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Flo flows looks really cool, but half of it was under a tarp this weekend. Yeah, but so. you know, in in general, mm -hmm. it's it's a wonderful recreation of mm -hmm. Radiator Springs, and it feels like you're somewhere else, and that's like kind of what's missing from Avengers Campus, which we, we've talked about here a lot. Yeah. But it's, you are there. You're in the movie. You're in a specific place that you've imagined. And I think that helps with it too, where it's just like you're you're somewhere familiar mm -hmm. somehow. And even if you've never seen Cars, everyone, I mean, for the most part, anyone that lives here knows what Route 66 is, or they've at least been to like Arizona, New Mexico. So they know what that looks like. You know, there's like a reference point there. Even yeah. if you're not in the movie, there's yeah, a reference point. Ornament Valley is just a play on Monument Valley. And, mm -hmm. you know, and even if you haven't been in New Mexico, you've seen High School Musical too. So <laughs> I definitely, yeah. or if you're watching The Bachelor this, I was gonna this say, season. I was actually going to say it. If you're watching The Bachelor, you know exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> if you're watching The Bachelor, follow Kimmy. No, don't. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say this is a reminder to Rain to put the correct lower thirds. But Rain probably has stopped listening by now and just finished editing the episode. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll let's hope that's <laughs> I'll the text them. I'll text them. We'll okay. Check okay. 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 Yeah. All right. We are jumping parks. We are mm -hmm. park hopping to pirates of the Caribbean. All right. You visit the Caribbean, but you go on pirates of the Caribbean. So yeah. again, caverns. What caverns are you talking as about? As soon as you go, as soon as you whoosh, Oh, like the first drop yeah. or both drops. Yeah, the best part of the ride, yeah. I got to say. Mm -hmm. You're in caverns. And again, top to bottom theming. That's the trick here. What? Can we go back a little bit before we get to the caverns? The bayou? The bayou. Uh -huh. I love the bayou. But you're not immersed okay, in the okay. bayou. Okay, no, no, no. You look to your right where it's blue bayou and you're hearing people yelling, throw a piece of bread it's, or whatever it is. Throw ah, a bread roll. Whatever. To the left is great. Cause you see the guy like, doo, 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 doo. and then you can't, it's kind of a secret, but there's an alligator in the water. Yeah. It's, and it's like, but I don't feel immersed yet. You know what it is though. So after you pass that point, there's two bridges or not bridges. There's one bridge. And that's like on top of like, it's like where the blue by you employees, go, like they, they, yeah. you see them on it sometimes. Once you pass that threshold, it's just brickwork. And then you see the, the skull. Psst. Best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love that part, even though it's just brick. No, no, okay. And then like, I think there's like flickering lan lanterns as well, right? It was like yeah. the, the illusion of like flickering lights. So like even that alone, it feels like I'm about to like. I'm not immersed though till the second drop, because even the first drop, it's kind of like it looks a little splash mountainy. Okay. But then you get down there and you're like, oh, I'm in a cave. Yeah. I am not. I have exited Disneyland. And I love the musical transition because it goes from like, yo, then it's like, 
Yeah. Well, you know, like, that's when you start to uh, that, hear that part. That's my favorite music, too, maybe. The the second one? Yeah. yeah. Just, like, the, the cavern area, like, before you even hit the... Yeah, I have that on a loop at work. I yeah. love that one. And so that whole area is just, like, you know, there's that somehow underwater waterfall. It's not underwater. You're in a cave or cavern. But, it, yeah. But you know, it's like a storm. Yeah. I guess, yeah. And, and so it's just, like... Yeah, I guess the storm doesn't make any sense, does it? But it's well, fine. Well, you see, like, the... No, but you're underground. <laughs> I always just assumed... It's like an opening in the cave I always something. just assumed it was just, like, we're seeing, like, their memories. Uh, maybe. Are we, are we in their graves, supposedly? Is that the lore? Uh, I don't know. But I've heard a lot of theories of, like, that... Or I, I guess now it's now it's even more confirmed because that one that one pirate now that has like that mirror face where it goes oh, yeah. to, like now the theory is like oh the curse is being like you now they're real people again or whatever but before when it was just the mist before it was like oh the mist is like the curse and now you can see them as human I don't know but that that was what I heard but but yeah I I do feel like I'm exploring a cave and yeah. like I found a pirate hideout mm -hmm. and which is what you're supposed to feel and that's the funny thing it's like here's just like things working as planned right mm -hmm. you're so just what's a ride you're just supposed to feel like you're there you know and, and what i like too do. sorry what i like too though is the seagull <laughs> i don't know if he's on top if he's, is he on top of the skull oh, let's go be like a, he's like moving I, his head I, back I and like, forth i like the crab pinching where is he again on the on the ground you're just you're just pinching yes yes yeah. yeah right there yeah but uh then then uh you know you, you go past the octopus whatever you get to barbosa that one's like it's neither here nor there for me. The uh what's the forced perspective doesn't work for me with the lighthouses. What lighthouses? In the distance, they're supposed to be small lighthouses to make them as soon as you look forward. I've never two lighthouses. Is that where they're fighting? No. So on the right are yes. the Spaniards. Yes. We're going to sink your ship. And then there's Barbosa on the left. Yes. Straight forward are two lighthouses. They're yeah, but you know there's shadows of people fighting. Are you talking about those no, lighthouses? No, 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 no. The lighthouses are like as tall as you are right now. I'm sure if you pointed it out, I would know exactly what you're talking they about. They have but right like now flames totally on top of them, but they're they're like barely as tall as this table. Okay. And they're supposed to be like, oh, they're small because they're far away. It's like I could see it right there, mm -hmm. which I think is why they used to lean into that fog. But it just, you know what? Yeah, you're right. There hasn't gross. been fog in a while. It just felt really like musty, or I don't know what the word is. Just really humidity, and it's uh, just like musky, <laughs> musky, whatever. Yeah. yeah, I will say it did help the overall ambiance of it. But you're right. Like there was, I, I every time I touched my skin, I would just feel like, 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 like kind of like how you feel after you sweat. It's like sticky. It just felt kind of yeah, weird. It was yeah, gross. Mm -hmm. it's gross. humid. But there. it did look, it did look nice. I yeah. will say. So then you get into the city. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you see like buildings in the distance. You see pathways, which I like. You see bridges. Yes. You see stairs. We go under bridges. Yeah. yeah. You go under bridges. You see palm trees. Like, mm -hmm. and there, there is kind of a sky too. Yes. There and, are, there's clouds throughout the, yeah. and throughout so the ride. Yeah. That's like, it's halfway there for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's, it's not fully there. Maybe because we're still on a boat, but they do a pretty good job. And and I do like the city, and I like the burning city. I love the burning city. Yeah, I love the guy with the hat. But this isn't about pirates. Mm -hmm. This is uh, what is happening? Okay. Uh, and but that's again, that's the least immersive, even though it's still immersive. But I like again when you exit the city, you're in the the prison or whatever. Yes. Because the ceiling is now like stone. Mm -hmm. And you kind of feel like you're in a dungeon. Yes. And especially with the barrels hanging or whatever. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm inside a place. I'm not on a ride. So what about when, what about before that room with the creaking ceiling? That one's okay. What is that supposed to be? Like a shack or something? I think you're underneath a tavern or something. Okay. And I think in the fourth movie, they kind of make that scene happen with, uh, oh, I think Jack is fighting okay. whoever Penelope Cruz is playing. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that movie. I've only seen the first one, so I don't know. What? <laughs> I've, we've talked about this. No. Okay, I've only no. seen the first one. Okay, you, the the second one is very good. Okay, we will watch Pirates if you watch Twilight. Uh, no, I've already read it. We're we're gonna watch Twilight. I've you already read it. Read you heard it, it here first. No, no, you you didn't. 
Uh, it's on Netflix, the entire series. Whatever. <laughs> he was doing Twilight themed tweets this week. If you want to check those out. Listen. Unprompted. He did that on his own. No, uh, Bella or something was trending. Oh, really? You know what? There's TikToks. Oh, sorry, I hate TikTok. But because it's back on Netflix, the jokes are coming back. And yeah, it's great. No, that, it's great. Come on. Yeah. I, I am shameless in trying to jump on meme bandwagons with the Tramon accounts. That's true. That's the point, though. That's, the that's what that's that's what it is. Mm-hmm. All right. So anyways, back to the dungeon. <laughs> back to the dungeon. Ba- back to dungeon. Well, I dungeon. It's the same. Yeah, it's, it's creepy. Same. It's you know, creepy enough. Edward would put Bella in a dungeon if he could. That's 50 shades of gray. Is that not Twilight fanfic? It is. That's why I'm saying it kind of, you're, I'm saying you're like in the same, you're there. Yeah. You're there. Yeah. Well, that didn't go over our heads, but bricks do in this dungeon. You got archways. Yeah. Of brick. Yeah. And, and you got pirates shooting each other. The sound design is pretty good too. We haven't talked about sound design, mm-hmm. but you hear the, like the, I think it's the Doppler effect that pew, like the sound moving it might not be the Doppler effect but that's fine it does sound it, really good yeah it? it sounds like it's, it could just be because it's a smaller room too Maybe no just they the were the sound they, travels they definitely recorded that as like the bullets flying across your face mm-hmm. and and it does a pretty good job and it it hits the metal when you feel like it's supposed to you know the bing, like a bing. yeah yeah and the animatronics are like still spot on they're good i i still get nervous going underneath that barrel i still like it's, I, every time i'm on it i feel like it's gonna fall i know it's not gonna fall like the guy's gonna let go no that the barrels are gonna slip out of the rope they're not gonna. i know but like every time like i get like every time i'm there i slowly do this like slowly and i realize like oh i'm very aware of the barrels right here yeah well the you know the guys holding up the barrels that's where i notice like their clothes are dirty and that must help Mm-hmm. God, we don't really need to clean these. Yeah, They're supposed yeah. to be dirty. Yeah. And Rain has pointed out like Disney loves like making things look dirty right away. Kinda yeah. Like Galaxy's Edge. It's so, like, so it doesn't look run down later. Yeah. Repaint Space Mountain, please. Yes, please. Let's do yeah. that. But yeah, pirates, super immersive. Even when you, you get back up, you only get taken out of it once you see the the people. Yeah. I would say like I, I think to do, when we went last week, I actually turned around Cause I wanted to see like, you know, you kind of go, you kind of go up that teeny little drop yeah. and you like kind of propel yourself forward. I turned around and I just saw like the restaurant and it, but it has like that white fencing on it. So it still matches the theme. So it's like, yeah, it's like Oh, New I'm Orleans, so, I'm like back like, in this, I'm back in the bayou kind of not really. And then you see the parrot and you see the map and then you see people, but lattice fencing. Lattice, that's, that's what it's called. Yeah. I was, La- trying to, I was trying to think of the word. Lattice landing, lattice. not Lafitte's. It's Lafitte's land. Anyways, let's let's stroll over to Pooh Corner. Yes. Not the ride, but no. the store. I love that store. It's very cute. That store is adorable. It feels like you're in a cabin. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, and you look. I just get woods. I mean, cabin. Yeah, but yeah, like woods. Well, uh, yeah, you're, yeah, you're you're somewhere else. I would say the first half of the store feels like the woods. Once you get to like the where they sell the treats and stuff. It's more honey themed, so it feels if that feels like the attraction to me. That half of it feels but, like the attraction. But you still you feel like you're still somewhere else. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. don't feel like you're in a gift shop. You're not an emporium, you know. <laughs> this week it was really crowded in there. Yeah, it was crowded. So if so, that took me out of it a little bit. But I but when I've been there in the past, when it hasn't been as crowded, you're totally right. Yeah, you're there. But alone this week at it night, felt like whatever. it felt like a, oh, there's a lot of kids in here. <laughs> Everybody yeah. wanted that 66 cupcake they were selling or whatever. For some reason <laughs> that was the only merch they had by the way they had no 66 merch at all i asked it was kind of crazy yeah. anyways no one maybe it's online them. and you can order 66 N- maybe i don't that's know star, I didn't, that, I didn't, that's I, star wars joke. oh i okay <laughs> execute order 66 okay well. yeah. <laughs> uh really you don't all right we're watching the prequels we're watching the prequels before we watch twilight <laughs> anyways yeah. all right so, I don't have too much to say about Pooh Corner. It's just, no, awesome. it's just wonderful. It's just really cute, and it's a, it's almost like every time I'm in that back corner of the park, it feels really cozy, like yeah. very like. I was, I was gonna say it's, yeah. it's a warm embrace. Are you in edit mode? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry. There's a down keyboard button. Thank you. Okay. And the checkbox in the top left. We're good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So then, let's let's jump parks again because Pooh Corner, I love it. It hugs me mm-hmm. with honey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But that's about it. The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure. This ride 
is why this episode exists. Mm -hmm. So we went on there just to get out of the heat. But again, mostly the beginning, you're you're underwater, Mm -hmm. but you're like in an underwater cavern. Mm -hmm. It's rock work. It's the rock work. What? Just you with caverns. It's like, that's like, I think this episode needs to be renamed with Kirk Loves Caverns because you've talked, every single thing we've done, you mentioned the caverns. But here, okay. Except for Pooh's Pooh's Corner. Petition to get a cavern in there. No, but okay. Think of it this way. What else could you be immersed in? You could be underwater. No, that's not happening. You can be in a forest. That's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. What's easy? Making fake rocks. That's true. That's the trick here. Mm -hmm. Right? No, don't. I know. What do you do? I don't know. Hang on. I'm trying to adjust myself. I'm slipping. All right. We're good. All right. So the beginning though, look, forget that I'm obsessed with caverns. (laughs) Okay. Just forget that for a second. Okay. Do you not feel like you're in an underwater cave? Forget underwater. I'm torn with this one because I do feel like I'm underwater. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, you know how you the bubbles come yeah. and then Ariel singing um, part of your world. I feel underwater there and I feel underwater with Ursula. That middle section where Sebastian singing, I can see other the clams and I'm aware like, oh, I'm not underwater no, anymore. That is like that's the area. That is specifically not listed here. Yes. That's the only area so, I'm out of it. Yeah, I'm like, I don't. That whole beginning, mm-hmm. you're just like, oh, I'm underwater. It's cold in here. And there's a breeze. Mm-hmm. Yeah, water's passing over you. Whatever. Right, Close right. enough. And yeah, you're in air. Uh, Ariel's Grotto, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. then uh, it's it's like a good again. It's not cozy, but it's like a like a immersed feeling again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yeah, you go to the you know you go to what's the song? Oh, um, how do we not know this? Mm-hmm. Under the sea. <laughs> under the sea. <laughs> Sing it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, you don't feel like you're under the sea at that part. It's but, just, but I think because you're aware of everyone around you, you and because there's crazy show lights on the ceiling. They're yes. not covered at all. It's very small world esque. Yeah. I was gonna say that. Yes. Very small wow. world esque. You're just we're just on the same page right yes. now. So then you go to Ursula's grotto. And R- I love that area. That's R- my favorite R- part. But yeah, that you're again, you're you go back into the caves. I think a part of it too is when you see the eels, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like their voices almost have this like effect of like they're underwater or maybe that's just their, maybe that's just a voice in the movie. They, it just has like their, their voices has a distinct sound to it. That sounds very, their, their voices sound like electrical current is running. Yeah, through them, like exactly. Wires. So I think that gets me back in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. Cause that, whole and they're part, like pulling it open and it's very like, you feel it feels, it, it, the room feels small again. So you feel like you're underwater again, yeah. you know? And you go there and she looks great. Oh my God, I love that. You are in front of Ursula for all intents and purposes. You have like all the dried up mermaids or whatever they are mm-hmm. and the potions and whatever. Are they krill or something is what they are? I, think, I don't know. No, whatever. I think krill are smaller than that. Okay. Anyways. There's something. Yeah, uh, this just reminds me of Finding Nemo. I know. <laughs> Swim, <krill>. away. <laughs> Swim away. Swim <laughs> away. Uh, so anyway, like, okay. Yeah. That scene, again, you're in another cave, whatever, but here, look. First non-cave, right? Mm-hmm. The kiss the girl scene. I love that scene. This is what inspired the episode. This is what the artwork is. Ooh. You have like that big tree, which is like, it's kind of like a weeping willow. Yeah. And the storks are like holding it back, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, they're coming down. They're not necessarily over you, but it feels like they are. Mm-hmm. And you don't see a, a good thing about these Omni mover rides. They tilt you or spin you to where you need to look. Mm-hmm. So you don't see behind you. Mm-hmm. There might be nothing behind us. Maybe there's a wheelchair. Yeah. But anyways, you, you've got Eric and Ariel mm-hmm. and they're like, they look good enough and they're not in water, right? But it looks like they are. There's no actual real water there. No, it? they're not in water. But it feels like there is. Yeah. And there's that fake water coming out of the fish and mm-hmm. then you got the frogs and whatever, but that's not water either. Yeah. But it, it doesn't take you out of it because the whole scene is like, I'm in this nighttime lagoon. And I think though, well, back to the water thing. I, I think the main difference is that Ariel's hair is real now. Right? Is it? it was for a while. I'm trying to, that's what I was thinking about right that now. Might I, was be. Like, I don't know. Because I was the whole thing of like her hair was pl- plast, whatever that cut, whatever it is underwater. But then when she's outside of it, her hair is real. Huh. Outside. And maybe because it doesn't really need to move like it's underwater. Or anything. Yeah. But I'm trying to think if we saw that last week. Anyways, it doesn't matter. But yeah. I think that was part of it. But so 
I I love that scene. Mm -hmm. That's where like not not even because of the subject matter of the scene. I'm like, hey, it's cute, whatever. Like, yeah. But it's like it feels like you're again, you're just somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And and if, if, again, that part of the ride feels very intimate because it's like not like a big room. It's like you're. It's like the way it's it's more like a stage. Like you're like you're watching it like a play. You know? Yeah, and there's no uh, like set piece. Well, they are the set piece. I know, but set piece like uh, maybe it's just in a video game that they say it like this. But like the set piece moment is when like a building is falling down, mm -hmm. like, like a big deal, mm -hmm. even though it's literally a set piece. Yeah, set piece is like, oh, this is the thing you got to be. This is dramatic. This is going to be a random question. So in the movie, the climax of the movie is when Ursula, when they defeat Ursula, right? Uh -huh. What's the climax of this ride? Would you say it's that scene? The kiss the girl scene? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know why I thought about that. Cause I'm like, cause the, really the next, the next room you just see him. It, it's like a little moving Ursula. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's already a, like a conclusion. Yeah. And then you see the little wedding or whatever at yeah. the end. And then Zaddy, Zaddy Triton, you know? And, uh, yeah, that part's fine. Mm -hmm. But at that point, the ride's already kind of over for me. So I don't feel like that does feel like I want to ride now. It's like, oh, yay, happy ending. Well, but, because you can see the light from the yeah. queue. That's what, that's what gets me out of it. I'm like, oh, we're almost done. Like, yeah, but at the end, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm good with that. It's cute, though. I do. And even the line, even though, yes, it's outdoors and you can see, I, I love the detail of just, like, the floor with the shells, like, and I think was it Rain that said it two weeks ago that like the the ground transitions from like brown to like blue. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's not necessarily immersive, but it's getting you ready for hey, you're about to have an immersive experience. Okay, they you tried. Know? Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. it's it's a good detail. It's good details for yeah. sure. So let's let's park up once again to just the alleys of New Orleans Square mm -hmm. because we got to walk through there for just a moment mm -hmm. last week, mm -hmm. and it was empty there, which helps. And you're just, these buildings are taller than you are. Yes. You know, you you have walkways going over you. You have, like, plants on the second story. You have there's, these, like, balconies and Yeah, stuff, there's yeah. balconies that, like, are they real? No, but it's still, like, they're there. Mm -hmm. And you've got that probably uh, forced perspective. But you're so close to it, you can't tell. I I'm think sure there are a few that are real, though. There's a Club 33 one, I think. And then I think there's one, if I'm not mistaken, it's for... One of the executives. I don't know no, if Brody has or something like that, but somebody has one. Oh, no. That's like the, the little fake balcony. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But but what I mean is like the windows are probably smaller than they should be. So they like look Main like Street, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it feels like like you're in just the alleyways of a town. And I don't know if it's supposed to be alleys. It's supposed to be like streets, but it feels like you're in the back streets. Mm -hmm. Back streets back, you know? All right. So then... <laughs> You're not supposed to acknowledge it. You're supposed to just you let it. You laughed first. I didn't laugh. Did. I smiled. You, you got to let it slide Don't smile. and then let them. Don't smile. This isn't a happy podcast. <laughs> I work in back. I, I, I see no smiles. I literally say it's a happy podcast. I mean, <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, in the and first then they're episode. making something new in there too. Something's cooking. This is what I'm saying. Uh, it's not going to be a restaurant. It's listen, too small to be a restaurant. Listen, it's going to be a store. No. Okay. Placing my bets. Either they're moving the bread bowls there. Or adding them there. That would make sense. That's what I said, but I don't think you were listening. I, um, <laughs> you what's, were, up, what's up with the shade today? What's going on? You were talking about what? pieces of eight in America. That's why. Oh, it's your favorite store. Or is it Le Baton Rouge? That's pieces of eight. Okay, yeah. Or we, we just had to, she loves pirates. So we so ended anyways, up in there, yeah. Uh, there's, so it's either going to be that. Mm -hmm. Beignets. Or some Tiana nonsense. Okay, this is what I mean by restaurant. I don't think it's going to be like a sit down. No, or no, it's not. The snacks make sense though. I can see them moving the French or like the the mint julep bar to like there. Yeah, I and can, making it more like a like an actual like, and maybe it'll be easier for them to produce things in that kitchen. Who knows? Yeah. The thing is though is that do they have space for not only a pickup area but also a kitchen? Like I don't know how big that space is. You know. A pot of chowder that they made in French Market and walked across the street, like you know. I guess. I yeah, know. it could yeah. be something like that, or they can make things in Royal Street Veranda and just. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, yeah, it could be it could be a mobile order only location. That's what I'm thinking. But now that you're th saying that. They I'm wouldn't thinking. say something's cooking. Come on. It's too on the nose. It is, but it's also very Tiana Bayou themed. Like that whole area is basically like Tiana's corner. Like that, like the like they always have Tiana there and yeah. Nadine there. It might be some there. Tiana food thing. Maybe. Yeah. Well, then they, they should sell. What does she make? Gumbo? 
They sell gumbo. Yeah, like the bread bowls, which yeah. it's still closed. Randomly. Okay, apparently oh, it's the bread bowls that I are the issue. I saw today a picture from yesterday that there are work walls around it now. We missed that on Saturday. Or it wasn't there on Saturday. Around what? Around the veranda. Oh, okay. Where they sell bread bowls. What? Where they normally sell bread bowls next oh, to I pirates. Oh, red bulls? Sorry, I'm red like, bulls. <laughs> like red bulls? No, um, red bulls. But it, there were, there were um, work walls around it, so who knows when that's going to open. But we'll see. Yeah. So then... Just a little down the ways. Haunted Mansion. I love Haunted Mansion. Yeah. It feels even more immersive now for some reason. I think just because they added more, it doesn't feel like a barren half-finished ride. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where just even that entrance, where the outside, forget it. You mm -hmm. know, once you get inside, you're in a mansion, right? And the, the walkway downstairs, like once you get out of the stretching room, pretty good. Mm. Especially if you... It's more immersive when you look up because you see a finished ceiling. Yes. Yes. Otherwise, it doesn't quite feel mansion-like. You're just, ah, oh, it's some walls. But then you look up and you're like, oh, this is a nice place. I would say Haunted Mansion is one of the few rides that I feel really immersed because I don't see them pulling the strings behind the scenes, if that makes sense. Like, there's some rides that you can see where it ends. You can see where there's a cast member door. You can see where there's a, you know, something going on. This is one of the few rides, though, you, as soon as you walk into the, walk into the building, there's wallpaper, there's ceilings, there's, like, an elevator, there's frames on the wall. Like, oh, it feels the most, like, they, like, Walt Disney was, you know, help designer or whatever. But so well, it's it like, was going to be a walkthrough. Yeah, so. exactly. So that's what I'm saying though, that every inch of that place is very immersive. And even like the walls you can't see because I've turned around, they're just blank. Like okay. there's nothing on it, but there's no like cast member sign or whatever sign on it, you know? But what's the best place to hide walls and doors? A house. Mm -hmm. Because they're supposed to be there. I think that's why it yeah. feels the most like, like, oh, there's a door there. Mm -hmm. Well, you're in a house. Of course there's a door there. Like even when we did the, when we cut the line and we got to go down that hallway, it still felt like it was part of the house. It almost felt like like like, like a servant's quarter or something, kind of like, yeah. you know how like, you know, they have like their own special entrances kind of thing, but it didn't feel like a, hey, this is where the cast members get in. This is the way they get in. It, it, it just felt, felt like, like it was part of it, you know? It felt like a clue shortcut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's probably what they look like. You know? Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then the, I've also felt pretty immersed in the, the first few scenes, you know, the hallway with the doors. Mm -hmm. It's like I can imagine walking through here, and I think they're just regular size too. So the fact that you're sitting, but you're very close to those doors. Yeah, like there's a part when it's like literally feet from you. Yeah, maybe less. But they, but that's the thing because they're just doors. Doors aren't like this huge thing that you have to make look small. Doors aren't a pirate ship. Yeah, you know, doors aren't animatronic humans that are too close to you or whatever. It's like they're yeah, doors. They're doors. Yeah. And it just feels like you're walking down the hallway. They fixed they fixed it up a little bit. I think there's some new lighting in there. I think the lighting changed. There's that yeah. sunroom with the oh, let me out of here, you know, and it all it feels lifelike because it's probably life size. Yes, which is a good trick because it's not a trick at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, then of course, well, I switched these by accident, but uh, then you get the I don't know, the ballroom is first. Well, Madame Leota and the yeah. bar. Yeah, Madame Leota is the... Again, though, that room doesn't have a whole lot going on. I mean, it's got the moving stuff. That's that's the, they that's did the focal look, point. But... I, I felt like I saw less curtains this time. Okay. It felt a little darker in there in a good way. Yeah. So that was good. Probably to hide more stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, of course. And uh, if you look up there, it's not that great, though, especially during Christmas. You see strings Yes, and you that. see. Yeah, because it's it's that's the thing about the oh, Miniature Holiday. Like, the, there's more lights in there, and that yeah. kind of takes away from the experience. Yeah. The, yeah. But then uh, the ballroom, pretty good, just because mm -hmm. it's jam packed full of stuff. You can't see all of it in one go. There yes. just isn't enough time to look up, down, left, and right. And that's one of the rooms you don't go through. Yeah. You see it from like a platform. So they can do whatever they want in there. You're just looking, and they, then you're just going to see what they want you and to it, see. It's just huge. It's generous. And it looks like a grand ballroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, it feels like you're looking at it. But that you're just walking across it. Like, oh, this party's going on. I wonder on. if that room's to scale. It looks like it is, but because we're a distance away, I'm curious if it is. Uh, we are on a second story, so. Yeah. Maybe. No, I think we're on. Yeah, no, there's a floor above us, too. It almost feels like, you know, like in those, like, hospital shows where, like, doctors will watch a surgery being done. And they're, like, in that room. Oh, yeah. What's yeah. That, what's that called? I don't know what it's called, but it kind of feels like we're doing that. Surgery. It's not 
gallery. It's a gallery, yeah. Is it? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's called a gallery. Uh, and then you get into the attic. Even the attic, it feels nice and like small oh, in there. <laughs> feels like an attic. It does feel like an attic. Like there's just junk in there. Mm-hmm. And lots of old stuff. It's dusty. And you cannot... I still don't feel like I've seen the entire attic. No, me either. Like there's just so much in there. They probably add stuff and take stuff out without you noticing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it feels like you're just going through an attic. And I think again, it's the ceiling is themed. Everything's themed. You're enclosed. You can't see anything else. Like you're in there. Uh, there is like a roll up door. You could see on the left when you first get in there, but that's fine. Oh yeah. That, yeah, that, that's the weirdest door. I'm like, you, at least put a flame over that or cover it. I'm not yeah. sure what it's for, but I think that they probably to move props in and out. Yeah. That's my guess. Like especially during, night. especially during holiday, the holidays. Yeah. Ugh, I know. <laughs> Pretty soon. And then, uh, then you get to the backyard. It's even more full these days. Uh, what did you notice behind the hat box ghost this time? You noticed something. Oh, right. I when forgot already. When you look behind the hat box ghost, there's a door that's open. Another door. And there's just bats hanging. Yeah. And was that there before? I don't know. I've but, never, you, I, you you pointed at it. I've never noticed that before. Yeah. And they like a little purple or something, right? Like, yeah. And they're like small. Like they look for like a distance they, they away. They get you yeah. to look at the hat box ghost. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's the. the but again, ghost. one of those things where they probably could have just left that black and. But yeah. it's like it gives a little bit more like, oh, hey, like yeah. we're we're outside now. There's bats going on here. Cover everything in important things, you know. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, the backyard is just just jam packed more than normal. And I feel like now that we've gone a s- second or third time. This is our third time. Yeah. Going. It's like you could suspend your disbelief in ghosts for a second. And the it's like, ah, I see it because mm-hmm. you, you like. It's kind of like playing a new video game, watching a new cartoon or a movie. When you get a feel for the art style, you understand what they're trying to do and you're like on board with it. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to adjust to it. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I don't know if there's cell shaded movies. I'm sure there are. But there's a Legend of Zelda Wind Waker where it looks cartoony, but once you're like, I'm on board with the cartoons, mm-hmm. you just get used to it. Yeah. So almost like fill our magic. Like, it stops looking bad after a while. <laughs> All right. The Coco scene was amazing. I will say that. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Grizzly Peak. You have a lot of points on Grizzly Peak. No, because it's... No, I don't. Well, they're all, like, the same area. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, no, it's... We're going to Grizzly Peak. Mm-hmm. And just the general area. Peak the, or airfield or both? Airfield's pretty good. Okay. I mean, it's, like, my favorite land in DCA, probably. But Grizzly Peak as a whole... Mm-hmm. there's the recreation area and the trail mm-hmm. like where Redwood Creek is. Oh, that trail. Okay. Yeah. 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 That one's still closed. I think they're, they're just redoing it for Halloween. No, but it hasn't opened at all. But I think now there's going to keep it closed until yeah, that's where gonna, the villains grove is. I think so. Yeah. Okay. It's good. Oh yeah. That's two months away. I'm so excited. Yeah. But anyways, uh, the trees are just tall. I, I, I there's no getting around it. You, you are in nature. And you can just tell by the leaves that those are like the real deals because they probably brought them in to plant them because they those look like like they turned like orange. Remember, like we went, it, they were like brown, like in the winter, and now they're like bright and green and vibrant. Oh no, no, I'm talking about the pine trees. Oh, the pine trees. In the, I, was in the trail. About, I was talking about the ones on the at the yeah, air, yeah. airfield. Yeah, those two. But yeah, mm-hmm. the when you especially when you get into the trail, mm-hmm. it's kind of like if if you could feel dirt under you, it would feel like you're on a like hiking, walking trail, mm-hmm. but obviously you're on just asphalt, but yeah, yeah, but feels pretty good there. You hear the water, you hear birds, probably not even, I, I know some of those sounds are fake. Probably. <laughs> uh, and it's just very calm and serene. You don't really hear the rest of the park. I have not been down that trail in years. We walked past there this year. Oh, are they talking about like once you're inside the Wilderness Creek Trail? No, 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 no. Oh, just the walk. I'm sorry. Just the walkway. That's why I was like. Okay. Not Airfield, not Redwood. I'm sorry. Just where the churro cart is. Okay. I yeah. know what we're talking about. Yeah. And it's very quiet there. And you, you just feel like you're somewhere else. And there's music there, right? But even like. It's like that guitar music. Yeah. It kind of it kind of has like that. Um, Sorry. The Grand Californian music, I think. Yeah. It's a little bit different. But yeah. Uh, and, you know, you look to the left and it's a hotel. But the hotel's themed. It looks like it's supposed to be. The there. hotel's themed, and even the line to enter the park. 
Yeah. It's almost like you have to do like two turns before you get in there. So it's almost like there's just like benches there. So you're just hanging out. Yeah. And it, it's probably mildly uh, modeled after the Awani in Yosemite. I've always wanted to say that, but it's always booked like months in advance. Oh. Like 10 years ago, there was no cell service there, mm-hmm. which like, you know, 15, 16 year old me freaked out about. <laughs> and now I'm like, I hope there's still no cell yeah, service. Yeah, that'd be there. great. Love to go nice there. little break. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, then you also just in the middle of there, you have Russian River Outfitters. River. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to River. Shout out to River, my nephew. Hi, River. He's not watching. I know he's not watching. <laughs> you could send the timestamp. Yeah, I could be like, "Hey, River, how's it going, bud?" He'll wait. He'll wait at us. He. What's the date today? Today's the twentieth. Yes. So in three days, he will be eighteen months, a year and a half. Uh, the official time where you have to stop counting by months. We don't count. Jessica doesn't count by months. No, I know, My I know. Sister, I just we, mean to this day, it's one and a half. We do not say. Uh, listen, listen. People are all like, "He's twenty three months. He's just two, yeah. or almost two." It's like I say. But eight, eighteen months is like you can say it up until then. But I don't <laughs> because people say eighteen months for other things, right? Because year and a half is general. Eighteen months, is like mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Anyways, so, happy ru- early half birthday, River. I love you. So Russian River Outfitters, again a themed store. It's funny. I didn't go very much, but the both times we've been there, we've walked in that store because you wanted to look at it. I love being in there. No, it's really cool. I You're like in it. a cabin. And they covered up the their stairs in the back. They're covered. Oh, there are. Okay. They made it a huge shelf because, of course, you could just pack more merch in there. Mm-hmm. But stores, this is the thing. If you theme a store to be cute enough, you get people in the store. Mm-hmm. You get people in the store and they probably walk out with less money than they walked in with. Right. So that's what you got to do. And this is one of also one of the holdovers from DCA 1.0 because the Russian river, like Russian, like Russia, is a river. And oh. it's also a rushing river. Wait, so that store has been there since the beginning? Yeah. Wow. And it's one of those dumb puns that stuck around this whole time. That land has not changed at all, huh, since opening. Uh, Grizzly Peak. Airfield was added later. The peak has been the same since day one. Yeah. Same attractions. I think the only thing they did was they add like up characters in the, in, but that they just added a character. They didn't theme the whole. Yeah, they added that brother bear statue. Which again, like, I think that's always been there though. I, I never noticed it until literally this past Saturday. I think I've ne- it's, I, I, I've, never I've seen it always before. noticed it. So I don't know, but that, yeah, they haven't gotten any, any of the rides and I don't think they will. Cause I mean, there's only one ride in there. I mean, talking about just peak, not airfield. There's only one ride and that's their one water ride. Kind of like how Disneyland has splash mountain. I, I can't see them getting rid of that ride. What's funny to me though, was that that bear was supposed to be like the, like the, the hub, icon the icon and now it's, it wasn't though no but i'm saying in all the marketing materials it was or they were it was like stop trying to make it happen it's not going to happen so that's kind of what it felt like well what's well what's sad is the trees have what's overgrown. the icon now what would you argue the icon is now um that's a, maybe the fun wheel no, so the the icon is officially carthay circle yes because yes. carthay circle was where the sun was and it was called mm-hmm. the sun icon I, we don't call it the castle icon. No, Why no, are we no, calling no. this the snow? I'm saying we don't call it an icon. We decide it's an icon, you well, know? Okay, but you can't say meet you at the sun because we don't have rocket ships to go to the sun. You know what I mean? It has to be, there's already a sun, right? I'm like, let's meet at the hubcap. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, you have a Grizzly River run, which I haven't been on in a while. That's an immersive ride. I wanted to right? ride that last time, but we walked by it and it was shut down. Yeah. So I was like, I guess. Yeah, so. the first time... We went, I wasn't totally down. This time I was. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Uh, it was. It felt hotter this time. Yeah, today was brutal. Today was like 100 degrees. And the day we went was like 82, I think, 83. No, it got to 85, yeah, 86, I like think. Yeah, like in the middle of the day. But yeah. no, I was ready to go on it. But it, of course, it was long lines all day. But luckily, that's one of the few rides with Single Rider. And I've been pretty lucky. I've, I've been able to go with my sister before on Single Rider. But yeah. Yeah, but we walked by it. It was shut down, which sucked. <laughs> but it's an immersive ride, I think. No, like. that's a very immersive ride. Because you're you can't see most of the ride from the rest of the park. Because you're elevated, and even and then even when you are, I mean, you probably could look down, but like it's almost like you're covered by trees, trees, rocks, stone. Yeah, like and it's like your eye level's here. You're yeah. not looking down. It's not like Matterhorn where you kind of look around a little bit, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So hopefully I can go on that soon. But it's it's uh, 
it's another just like the simple trick. Yeah. You're just in nature and it's a real thing that you have like uh, something you compare it to. Haunted mansion, yeah. like have you ever been in a haunted mansion? Probably not, but you've been in a house. You've been in a, or like an old house or like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, you know what a cave is. Yeah. You know, like, you know what it's like to be inside like an area. Mm-hmm. And same thing with Grizzly River Run. Mm-hmm. I like the cave in that ride too. I don't Because you can hear cave. like a bird, gr- a bear growling. Oh, that's cool. It's really cool. Yeah, it's It's been a long We're time. We're riding that next time. I definitely want to ride it next time. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. I will all ride it. <laughs> so, I just hate wet socks. But then bring extra. But then you got to throw the socks away. No. Put them in my bag? Yeah, and like in a plastic bag. Now I need a plastic bag. Okay, then pack a plastic bag. But then it's going to get moldy. Okay, well, then just... Anyways. Buy cheap ones <laughs> and change them out. Big Thunder Trail. Another trail. What's his face? I'm trying to think of the trail. The one behind Big Thunder between that ride and Fantasyland, right? Yes. Yes. That is the Big Thunder Trail. What? I don't know if it's immersive anymore. It was immersive, but now that area gets packed and crowded. That's what I'm, yeah. Yeah. But at night. Oh, yeah. No one's around. You know, it's like you're you're somewhere else. It's quiet. Quiet is a big deal, mm-hmm. I think. In Disney. Quiet because then you can hear the sounds that Disney is playing yeah. for you, which is usually immersive. I would argue the Big Thunder Trail, but closer to Galaxy's Edge is more preferable. But like I said, it's been getting more crowded because it's the entrance. Everybody wants to be in there. So it's like you have to either go first thing in the morning, which is when we went the first time, or you have to go late at night Yeah, especially, to, get, to get that serene, chill vibe, you know? Especially that like overhang of rocks that they added mm-hmm. with Galaxy's Edge. Mm-hmm. And even like you don't see Galaxy's Edge until you round multiple corners. That's the thing about Galaxy's Edge is that it's pretty big, but even the entrance from Hungry Bear, you don't see it. Like yeah, you Galaxy's Edge go, is 40 acres. It's ginormous. Yeah. But they're again, though, I'm curious how much rise the resistance takes up because it takes up a lot of space. It's just it's kind of hidden. You can't because you have to like almost walk a, a ways to get there. But it's pretty that's a pretty yeah. big ride. But they they did a really good job of the spires blend in with Big Thunder. Mm-hmm. But also you don't unless you're at the top of Big Thunder. You don't see Galaxy's Edge. You don't see the ship. But even when I do, it doesn't. I don't see like I don't see like an, uh, uh, a tight fighter or anything. I just see the top of the. Yeah. So it's it's still somewhat it's, kind of you know okay. There's I, blinking I, lights, which is the issue, but that's mm-hmm. fine. That's when you're on the ride. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah it's it's hidden away, but it blends into where it is. Mm-hmm. I I actually am like unoffended. Like what else were they gonna put in yeah. Disneyland? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like glad they didn't do Arendelle. Uh, we've brought that up. Oh God, yeah, that would have. I mean. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it would have. Yeah. It would have been awful. So, Big Thunder Mountain itself. So, this is an interesting one because it's a roller coaster, mm-hmm. roller coaster type ride. Mm-hmm. Not a roller coaster. Yeah. And it moves a little quickly. Yes. But I think it, it hurts it in the places where it is immersive, but it really helps in the places where it's not. So, there's a couple parts where you can see backstage buildings with ladders and stuff like that. Exactly. You're making a face like you don't know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Because the ride, you're not supposed to look there and it's moving so quickly, it's like flash. You don't even see it. So that's where it helps. But why, again, is this immersive? Rocks and caves. <laughs> Rocks and caves. This one does more, though. This one does more. For the indoor portion, when you first get on the ride, that's amazing. You see the bats to your left. You've got that cool waterfall you're going under. You see, like, the, there's, like, a whole set. The rainbow puddles. The rainbow puddles. The second lift hill is outdoors, but to the, you see, like, little, like, little, was that where you the rattlesnakes? Yeah. You see rattlesnakes. You see, like, a big, like, wagon wheel off to the side. That, that's a hidden Mickey. The hidden, yeah, the hidden the Mickey. Gears. And there's, like, almost, like, these steps, but they're, like, they, they blend in with the rock work, so it looks like it's, like, part of the, yeah, of the mountain. Or they're like, really just emergency steps. Probably, yeah. But it looks like a mining And operation. then on the top of the hill, you see the goat. And then even when you're rushing past really fast, you're seeing a lot because you see, you know, you, you have the possums flipping, you hear the wolves howling. So I think that... I know we're not talking about Incredicoaster right now, but Incredicoaster fails at everything that they excel at because that ride, even though you're going very fast, 
it's it does stop it does slow down for you to look at things so even the last lift hill like when you hear like the poof, 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 like that area you're in there for a while and you're looking around you and the and the thing like the bomb the bombs set off at times where it's like Usually when you're like as uh, exiting the hill. It's timed it. well enough where you only see it happen once, I think. Right. And there's good projection mapping mm -hmm. with the wires. And that's what, fire. and it was close to like 18 months to do all these and changes. And I think that it was immersive before, but now they added more effects yeah. to enhance the, the immersion that's already there. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you, you don't see too much of the outside park, right? You, you see Galaxy Edge a little bit. Yeah, but I would argue that it doesn't take me out of it because the land is pretty well themed. I would say that when you do that sharp turn at the end, you see the big thunder trail. That's probably the most you see of the outside world. And it's so fast. You, no, just, you, just, okay. you just whip past it. So the quiet part of the lift hill, you do see New Orleans Square. The last lift hill. Okay, if you're in the front, it mm -hmm. doesn't let go. Yes. Until you're halfway down. You so see I don't go it. in the front very often. Yeah. So I haven't, and I usually just come on, hurry. So maybe you're right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When, when you're going fast enough, mm -hmm. you don't notice it. But when you see it slowly, it's like, oh, there's New Orleans Square. You see the lights and I've stuff. I never at noticed, night. but now I'm going to notice it. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so the show's all about ruining Disneyland. Ruining Disneyland. Analyzing that is actually a future episode. <laughs> don't invite me to that one. Oh, I don't want to ruin yeah. it. Uh, no, that, that's, that's going to be a fun one. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. So. We talked about it. We touched on it. We'll mm -hmm. touch of Disney. Let's get a little touch of Star Wars. Yes. Let's go to Galaxy's Edge. I know, I know. Not all of you like it. That's fine. The rides. The two rides. Expertly themed. They're really well themed. They're, both of them. Say what you will about Galaxy's Edge. For just feeling like Star Wars in general. Like, masterclass. Mm -hmm. Like, Yeah. Hogwarts is a thing, whatever, right? But it's like, no, I'm I'm on another planet. I'm yes. not in Disneyland. I will say I have been on Hog I have been to Hogwarts and I have been on that ride, the flagship ride. Very impressive. Cute. Indoor. I haven't been to the outdoor area. Very impressive. However, you are always in a line. With Millennium Falcon, I mean, right now because of COVID, it's weird, but the whole premise is that you go into the ship and you're allowed to wander till they call your oh, color. Oh, you're saying, yeah, the end part. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying though that like that's the one thing that they don't have that we have. But again, like it's actually themed at the same time. But yeah, it feels like you're in a ship. And like you said, you can hear them usually talking over the loudspeaker. And even when you're in the outdoor portion of the ride, I would say it's still pretty well themed because Galaxy's Edge is well themed. And you can see the Millennium Falcon from all angles or, you know, like above, below, things like that. So I, yeah. And then, of course, Rise, once you're inside, it's a whole different world. Like the queue is part of the experience. And yeah, that you you feel like you're on both of the ships. You mm -hmm. feel like you're on a Star Cruiser. You feel like you're on the Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. And even like when you walk on the Millennium Falcon and it clanks, like you're on a smuggler ship, so it's supposed to make noise. Like there's because there's compartments under you, and then top to bottom, again, there's no show lights on the ceiling. Way better than anything else. You don't see any show lights. You don't. Everything. You don't see is any perfectly show blended. Mm -hmm. And even the buttons fit because it's just like they look like, mm -hmm. you know, and the only criticism I have of Millennium Falcon, the only criticism I have, you are seeing it while you're in line and then suddenly you're in it. Yeah, but you go, okay, so no, <laughs> you see it and then you see Hondo. He's still not on it. He's talking about it. The only thing is it flies in, which is a little weird. But it, I think it, it's moving from outside to inside. So hold on, hold on. What do you do after Hondo? You go in the Millennium Falcon. How do you get there? I don't remember. A gangway. The thing you use to get on an airplane. Yes. Yes, that's true. You're so right. You are, you are right. Boarding I will say, though, you know what, though? I haven't written it in its original form in over a year. Because last two times you've written it. We just walked through. We just walked through it. Yeah, but you're still going down that thing. Yeah, I guess the pre-show kind of just gets to me a little bit more. Like, all right, I'm gonna board the ship. I don't but know. But you still do board it in a way that you would board a ship. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So that's still that's still a thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then you're there, and everyone gets that experience. You usually have time to sit down wherever you want, or look at whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, good stuff there. Now, I mean, even the cockpit is great. 
Oh yeah. And it feels like you're flying the mm-hmm. thing. A uh, little different on on Rise, but you feel like you're on a Star Destroyer. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no. I I have a love-hate relationship with Rise because I, okay, the Q is amazing. The Q is amazing, especially when you see the Stormtroopers and you're in that, um, I don't know what it's called, the hangar or whatever. It's amazing. I have to say the ride itself is not a thrilling ride. It's huh. the immersion. Yeah. It feels a little universal to me. And I know I'm going to get people going like, absolutely not. But because universal, like I'm thinking about like Transformers or whatever, right? Kind of like how Spider-Man, right? The ride we have, you go from like room to room with like different screens. This has no screens or like, it's like, it's, it's, it's like as an effect. It's not like, but I feel like you're kind of moving from area to area to area to area. It kind of gives me that. And the, I guess because the ceiling, you feel like you're in a building almost. So it almost feels like. So that's how a, much of this was by design? How much of this was, oh, we need to fit as many scenes as possible in this ride? You know what I mean? Like starter stories are that big though. They're like cities. Yeah. And they, that's the ATATs are there. I will say though, once you're on the lift hill, then it changes it because you see these huge, you know, ad, I'm going to say ADATs, well, these huge wrong, ADATs. But. And you, then I feel like, oh, we're on a ride now. I would I, I think my universal comment is most like the first two minutes of the ride. Once you get lifted though, then it feels like, a, okay, now I'm in this huge building or like in this huge star destroyer, or whatever we're in. Well, even the, the stormtrooper room, that's the portal where. Yeah. I'm, t- I'm saying that. Out. And the, and I think those, t- because I think maybe the high ceilings is what does it for me, or maybe it's just the, Oh, Whoa, this, this is a lot bigger than the, I thought. Those are the two areas in the whole experience that I feel like, Whoa. Okay. I mean the pre-ride when you get captured, the motion is pretty good too. Yeah. I'm talking about once, yeah, yeah once you're no, I mean, part, I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, like, mm-hmm. a lot of it is just, none of it, f- it's the thing, it's not thrilling, but none of it, like, I'm I'm almost convinced that the characters are real, and that's really happening, mm-hmm. like, because they're, they're angry at you, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, Kylo Ren's hunting you down. Kylo, yeah, I, I, I did, the Kylo, because you know what, though, he's... He's the most seen and heard character in the on the ride itself. Which he should be. Yeah, because he's chasing ship, you down yeah. and he wants to get you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even the bridge is very accurate too. Um, mm-hmm. Like because they are sunken down. Yes. Like they're the the captains are above. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just just really great. Mm-hmm. And then you you come out and exits well themed. You got nature. The only thing that takes me out of Galaxy's Edge are the weird carts where they sell the merch. Yeah. Resistance Outfitters. Yeah. Kind of lame. Yeah, but anyways, lame. not lame, but Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. It's really cool that in is, there. That is a hardcore shop. It is really cool in there. Everyone wants to go in there just to be in there. Mm-hmm. The merch isn't good enough, though. It all makes sense, but it's like, I don't want any of these things. And I like Star Wars. No, I don't have a problem with it. It feels like a very collector's type of, and because we're not collectors, it's like, I just go in there and look at everything and touch everything. And then I leave. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's the thing. So it's like, if you want to get merch, then go to one of those, like go to Droid Depot, go to Droid Depot or go right outside of Rise and go there. So it's like, this was like, this is for like the real nerds. Like you can go in here, you know? Yeah. You buy the lightsabers, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But like even the the, crystals, you buy them there too. Yeah. And the, Mm -hmm. Uh, holocrons and you have like all this stuff on top the helmets mm-hmm. the guns the blasters whatever it is so all pretty good and you have an animatronic in the store that's really cool and i didn't realize i mean like when we first saw the promotional i didn't realize he would be elevated and he is in a way it's kind of nice though because so no one can heckle it and then also it's like you see his head pop up you're like oh whoa it's right there <laughs> yeah yeah and he looks really lifelike to me yeah it's really really impressive and then even ronto roasters so the do you know What's roasting the Ronto? That droid thing. No, but the flame is coming. Oh yeah, it's a it's an engine or a thing from or, a pod yes, racer. Yes, yes. I think you pointed it out. One. Like you pointed. That Watch out. the prequels. It's not on the list, but you forgot to add docking bay seven. Because <laughs> I don't feel immersed in there. It feels like a restaurant. I know it is a restaurant. You know what? You're right. I'm thinking about the food because the food makes me feel immersed. Yeah. But the restaurant itself, you're right. It's, it is kind of, meh. yeah, the food. I like the doors though. I know they're just automatic doors are themed, but I like, it does feel like you're on a spaceship. Yeah. Boom, you know, the like that main sound. entrance is actually pretty good. That's, I guess that's what I'm talking about. Cause the room we sat in was like off to the side and yeah. it kind of felt like a restaurant, you know? 
Yeah, but it is pretty good. They don't lean in too much uh, to the story. No. Because there is a story. Matthew Serrano tweeted about this, though, which is hilarious. Okay. It's like having an irrelevant, elaborate backstory for a character is not theming. Mm-hmm. Theming is what you see, hear, feel, smell. Yeah. You know? And the story of Docking Bay 7, you know there's a ship on top? There's yes, a, yes. It's Docking Bay. Every week, a new chef flies in and cooks for you. But it's the same menu It's the every same week. menu constantly. It's the same ship because, of course, it is. They can't move it. <sighs> this is the thing with Galaxy's Edge, and I think this is where it gets its much-needed criticism. It should have just been a planet. It should have just been you're in a Star War now. Just That's fine. It's the backstories that never fell through. It's the things that were quickly abandoned that now it just feels like this is where you come and get your blue milk and you ride the Millennium Falcon and then you move on with your day. Oga is a character. We've never seen Oga. We've only seen her in pictures. But that's the thing, though, is that even the marketplace, the whole point of the homemade feel is, oh, there's a person up and you see her shadow sometimes, I think, in some of the stores, you see her shadow like working. I don't know if it still works. And you can like hear like tinkering and stuff. It's like, oh, that the the, the owner, the person making these things are, is upstairs working on them. I only saw that in promotional materials. I've never heard it in the park. Yeah. And the whole point was like, oh, they're going to know your score. They're going to talk to you in Nogas. And it's like, I would have rather them not tell us that and then do it later than tell us. And then all of us, I get it. We're in a panini. I get it. But even before the panini happened, I never, oh, it'll come later. It never came. Oh, yeah. And then you have Kat Saka's kettle. Who's Kat Saka? No idea. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Toy Dari and Toy Makers. That's what I'm saying. The toy maker. That's what I'm talking about. That person is supposedly there working well, on a it. A toy Darian wow. is Watto, the flying guy. And uh, he owns Anakin Skywalker. He's a slave owner. Oh. The little flying dude. So I guess the only lore with Oga's Cantina is there's like Oga's obsessions. Like, oh, that's her Oga favorite Oga runs thing. Black Spire Outpost. Oh, you didn't know this? I did not know this yeah. information. <laughs> but see, that's not your fault. Yeah. Oga is, is like the main purveyor of Black Spire Outpost. It's like... I run this town. Like Ever that kind since of thing. you said on the show that Oga's Cantina was not meant to be on its own, it was going to be part of a bigger restaurant. Now I'm less impressed with it, which sounds awful because, you know, it was a lot of money and work, but I'm less impressed with it now. And something I read online recently, I'm going to kind of jump a tiny bit. Um, I think Carly Weisel put on Twitter that she found out, I think in Orlando and maybe even here, they're mixing tables now with other guests. They've always done that. Right. But because of COVID, everyone assumed like, okay, they're going to, you know, split people up, but they're not doing that. So I guess people are finding that out as they walk up and realizing like, Oh, I'm sharing with people. Never mind. I think it says something like that though. I think it was one of those things where maybe someone didn't look into it. And now she's like, Oh, whoa, what? Like, I guess someone that told her like, Oh, I shared a table with somebody. And like at the end of the day, it's up to your own comfort level. I get that. But that's the, that's another reason why I hate it is like, if we had the restaurant, this wouldn't be a problem, but Everybody, you know, but you know, you know, talking about the good stuff. Yes. Talking about the good stuff. But on that note, the land clashes with COVID so much. When they stick a mobile order sign in a walkway, like, ah, get out of here. Like, it looks bad. It doesn't. It's so hyper themed that when anything that seems out of place shows up, takes you out of it right away. I would argue, though, they were doing They were starting to do that even before the pandemic hit, because if you look at like, I think I read before they were already changing the names of the dishes to something more normal. So people that are like, what's that? They they know it's chicken. Your Felucian garden spread is now the Felucian falafel garden spread made with impossible. And they were saying that part of that was because people were just, what is it? Asking too many questions, just taking up lines, which I get it. And then I think even like now there's a sign that says where the restroom is now. It says restrooms now. Where before it, it was, I, I kind of liked the chase of it. <laughs> to be honest, like where, like the cantina, it says cantina, but very weird writing oh. where now when you walk in, it'll tell you cantina this way, right this way. Like there's, there's signs so now. The restroom sign though, does still use their official font. Okay. Uh, the cantina is a midway font, like in okay. between, but there is everything. Like has- the line starts here signs that we're talking about. No, no, like the mobile order sign with the little hashtag on the phone thing. Oh, like the QR code, yeah. Yeah, like okay. that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. No, there was a hashtag. Like I think it's a number. Oh, yeah. that's lame. Okay. To say that it's a phone, I don't yeah. know. Uh, but then, no, so there's like all the name tags and stuff, right? There's the Orabesh, 
mm-hmm. which is the Star Wars alphabet. Mm-hmm. And then they have their own, like, where you can read it, but it looks weird. Yeah. There's that font. The Cantina font is just super stylized. Mm-hmm. But overall, there's a lot to the land. It does look like kind of lived in. You know, you see like houses and stuff and whatever. And it's it's it's, it's definitely whatever your opinion is on the land. It's very immersive. You can't see I, out of it. Yes. Just the only thing that's not immersive is the fact that you can see the back of it from the parking lot. <laughs> but yeah, you're but, not you're not in the theme park yet. Yeah. But I'm saying though that like but you're not but, racing yet. Yeah. When you're when you're inside the land, it's perfect. It, or it's like it's very well themed. I will say that. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and they need live music. They need a cantina band. They were playing music, right? At the marketplace? Live music. Live. Oh, yeah. Cantina band. Someone needs to bring, bring their sax. Can we bring back Calyx, please? <laughs> <laughs> would they let Would they let Helix play in Galaxy's Edge? No, <laughs> they wouldn't. That'd be cool, though, but they wouldn't. All right. Now that, you know, it's it's on the mind. Mm-hmm. Jungle Cruise. That was a lovely ride. Yeah. The, the retheming was a really great. The funny thing is, the longer... Okay. There's a sweet spot with the line. Mm-hmm. We were in there a little too long, but being able to go upstairs, there's a lot of theming upstairs. There's the radios, the maps, the the, the random boards of like yeah. information. Mm-hmm. The theming starts ahead of time, and I don't know if anyone gives that cue enough credit. It's such a nice cue. Well, because when you're upstairs, I will say I do like the line a lot, but they pack you when they're like starting, so it's like. I, 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 at one point I looked at the line and I was like, holy shnikes. Like, cause the way it snakes, if you're looking from a distance, you could, you can't even see the, the, the rails anymore. But once you get past that and you look at the walls and you look around you, there, it, it, it reminds me like that, that shot I got of like the binoculars and stuff like that. It reminds me of Indiana Jones, that cue. Cause yeah. you know how there's like little pockets of like, you yeah, see the same like, type of, yeah. yeah. So for me, it's almost like Jungle Cruise and Indiana Jones are like almost like the same type of theming, like that old school adventurer. Yeah. Which eventually, but like, it don't. And they, they even on the ride they acknowledge it. They say like, oh, like right there the the temple or whatever. So yeah, but for sure, I don't go upstairs a whole lot. Like usually, I'll be like, yeah. oh, I'll wait till it's shorter. But that day we just happened to go up there. But it was it was a really nice queue. Yeah. I don't know if they redid it, but it looked. It looked nice. I wonder if they just added a few things. And then if you hear the, if the music plays, then you hear in between like skippers calling somebody on the yeah. radio. It's really, really immersive. Yeah. And then kind of on that note, Trader Sam's, the bar. Yes. <laughs> you, when you're inside, you're, you're in another world. It well, didn't. Yes. Did it feel like downtown Disney, Disneyland Hotel? No. No. Well, not to spoil it too much because we're talking about it later, but. I almost forgot what time of day it was. Yeah. Not not in a creepy way, but in a way of like, oh, we've been in here for an hour now. If we go out, the sun will sell. I was like, oh, whoa. But because of the windows are like, they, they they look like you're like, you can see the volcano through one and whatever. So you almost forget what the outside looks like. It's really nice. Yeah, it's, I, I get why people say it's nicer that it's smaller as opposed to, I think the Walt Disney World one is bigger. Mm-hmm. As much as it's a bummer that not every gets to go, when you do get to go, you're you're fully in. It doesn't feel going back to Oga's. It doesn't. It's so funny. Oga's is bigger, but Oga's just feels more stuffed. Where this one feels a lot more. You're standing in Oga's. Servers are running around. That's in Oga's. true. Where there's here no it's food. just like there's not that many tables. So there's either the bar or the tables, and the, even the tables themselves, there's not. They're not like all packed in. You and, know. And they don't rush you out of there. No, they don't. You're just, I think they, there's a 90 minute limit, is what I heard, but I didn't see anybody get pushed out. And people just, you know, they're usually done by then. You know, yeah, that, I think that's just there so people don't camp out or whatever. Yeah. There's always that one person that yeah. ruins it. Mm-hmm. But overall, it's it's not even in the theme park, but it's as if it is like it's. Oh, I would say that's probably the best thing to do. If you can't get a Disneyland ticket that day, go to Trader Sam's. Is that the best themed restaurant? A thousand percent. Like it beats Blue Bayou. Yes. And because it's not trying to share it with another space. Yeah. And even though there's an out, there's a Tangaro Terrace, an outdoor area, you don't see that. Because no. what I love about the place the most, the bathroom, there's a bathroom in there. Because I think if there was a restroom in Tangaro Terrace, you had to get out and get to it, it would break the immersion. We're there. There's only, it's only one stall for each, for each gender. And it's like, that's it. So it's like you, you're kind of, everything is self-contained in there. Yeah. And even the bathrooms, you know, they're, they're I mean, themed, they're restrooms, but... You you don't. There's no reason to get to leave. There's no reason to leave it unless emergency or whatever. But you, everything you need is food, bathroom, yeah. drink, whatever. And, Everything's you know, in there. The mugs are themed. The cups. Mm-hmm. The food. Like even the the dishes themselves. Not like the food dish. Like the yeah, the, plate, the plates. The literal plates you get them on. Yeah. 
and mm -hmm. everyone's dressed all chill. Everyone's acting chill. Mm -hmm. They've got lines. They've got jokes. They've got like antics that they do. Yeah, I think, yeah, beats Blue Bayou, beats Carthay. Mm -hmm. And I know Carthay's just Hollywood, whatever, but like beats it. Obviously beats a lamplight. Like what else is there? I don't think, well, to be fair, Carthay, like, yes, there's a theme, but it's not like the thing about. T you don't feel like you're taking back thing, in time. The like they thing, say you the, are. The, yeah. The thing about Tr T Trader Sam's though, is that they, they, they picked a theme, they picked one thing and they leaned a thousand percent into it. You know what I mean? And I think it's like something that we know what that is. It's very Polynesian. It's very like, you know, tropical islandy we've all seen that so we know what to expect from that yeah so we're like star wars i, I keep going i keep going to oga they know that and ogas is fine i'm not coming after ogas but we they have to kind of invent stuff for that world we're here we know what to expect yeah, we know there's gonna be pineapple we know there's gonna be some kind of margarita we know there's gonna be some type of like tropical element to the food you know like we know what to expect so yeah and all they have to do is be the best tiki bar yes yeah. mm -hmm. It's very, very well done. So some honorable mentions to immersion because they're not quite there. They're almost there. They're almost there. Yes. A touch of immersion. <laughs> Space Mountain. Yeah. You're, once, you, once you're inside. Yeah. Once you get past the lift hill, basically. I'm not talking about the queue. Just. Oh, the ride. Yeah. 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 You can still kind of see a little no, disco ball. No, but I would argue and, the queue too. As soon as you enter the indoors. Uh, yeah. You're like small corridor. You go in there and you see the queue, which kind of takes you out of it. But you're like, you know, you see like windows. You see no outdoor yeah. outside world at all. Yeah. And then uh, the Enchanted Tiki Room. Yes. You, you feel like you're on vacation a little bit. It gives me the slightest hint of Trader Sam's. Yeah. At least the outside. You know what it is? I wish that outdoor area was where Trader Sam's is. Like the outdoor area. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like kind of because I feel like that outdoor area is really nice. I mean, once you're inside and you're like waiting to get your dole, your, your dole whip, you're in line to go in. The, in like, yeah, I kind of wish that'd be kind of cool. They like like a little um, dole whip stand up front. But then, I mean, that would cause chaos. But right. I'm saying they're like just that vibe in front of Trader Sam's. They have it at Tongaro Terrace. That's true. Yeah. It is there too. Okay. Uh, Tarzan's Treehouse. Yeah. I love Pretty Tarzan's Treehouse. I good. love it. No, I would argue that should be on the list for best. The thing is, people, because it's it's high up in the trees. Yeah, you once everything. you're up there, no, no, no. But like, once you're up there and you're like cross that bridge, I would say you're fully immersed. Yeah, but you can see. But a it's lot more of effort to get there. Yeah, uh, the train has some good moments. Mm -hmm. You know, just the the railroad business. I railroad. think, um, what's the book? Mark Twain. I think that's more immersive than the train. I, yeah, I think it's got its moments. Once you pass the chaos of. Like I would say yeah, once you get past Haunted Mansion between Haunted Mansion and then the end of the ride. Perfect. Yeah. I would say that's more immersive than the train. Cause when, even when you do see the train, it still feels like it's part of the landscape, yeah. you know? So I would argue that. Especially even now with the waterfalls and everything. The waterfalls. And I like that they kept, you know, um, the natives there. Like, it's like, you can't see that from a walkway. You have to be on the boat to see that. But the, the feeling I get when I'm on the Mark Twain is I'm relaxing at Disneyland. Not like, see, I don't, I, I don't think, feel like I think I'm the on a narration river. really, no, what makes me laugh when is once he stops talking about the rides, like when he's like, Oh, my good old pal, Briar Rap, I'm like, yeah, okay, well, this is Disneyland, let's, let's calm down over there. But once he talks about, like, you know, like, I love to be on these rivers for this many years, and I'm like, Yeah, me too, like, I know, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, feel I, I, I love that personally, but no, I love it, I just don't feel that, and I just, I just love that area when you see the natives there because I love, like. I have told you this before that I like, I like listening to like the Native American flute when I fall asleep at night. Oh, yeah, you and I, it's very like soothing, and that that wise old man's talking to us, and I'm like, I just want him to like so soothing. I love it. And there's a little wolf. <laughs> and then Astro Blasters. Here's my thing. I feel immersed. I thought this was a, a listen, joke. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> I feel like I'm immersed. I don't know what I'm immersed in though. But I feel like I'm in. I need this to be nice, so I won't say it. But. <laughs> What? No, just like Tomorrowland as a whole is just not. No, it. I know, I know, I know. But like when you're in that ride, it's dark. You don't see anything, and it's everything is themed the same. But again, I don't. <gasps> I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> Astro Orbiter. Yeah, that's no. why I was so confused. I'm no. like, that's literally the entrance. Astro. No. Oh yeah, yeah. I would, I would agree with this one. Yeah. I would agree. I don't know one. what I'm immersed in. Yes. But uh, you know. Um. So, yeah. Anyways, 
broken immersion. Broken immersion. <laughs> Indiana Jones. What are you talking about? Okay, listen, listen. This is the most immersive ride. Or and Q. Very immersive Q. Yes. Right? You get on the ride. It's pretty great. Most of it. And then you get to the dark hallway where they ran out of money and there's just nothing there. And then there's a projector on some fog. There's a dark hallway. Yes. Oh, on the right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's literally the we ran out of money hallway. And then there's the lava. What was there before? Nothing was ever there. Really? Yeah. That's okay. I thought maybe because that ride breaks down a lot, maybe there was something they just removed over the years. Okay. There's certain places where you can see things. Like once you've seen them, you, you can't unsee them. That opened in what, 95, 94? In the 90s. The 90s it opened. Okay. And then, I think 95 because it was like 40 years or whatever. Uh, 95, 40? Huh? 95, 40 years. From 55. Oh, are they talking about from, I'm like, that was uh, the year after you were born. Year. Yeah. Uh, so then, then there's the lava, but there's no fog there anymore. So you just yeah. see it just floating around. This is what I'm going to say about Indiana Jones. It, at its height, it was one of the most immersive rides. Now that they're pulling back a lot because it's just always breaking out, they have to just completely redo that ride. I would argue that the queue is more immersive than the ride itself. The ride is still great, but without the effects, the effects are part of it. But see, in the queue, I still feel like I'm in a queue. I don't feel like I'm exploring because you. My favorite part of the queue, though, is when you see like Mara on the ceiling, yeah, like they that changed area. The queue because of fire code. You were supposed to queue up inside the caves and inside everything. You, you can't do and that And you just reach right past it. Yeah, so it doesn't feel immersive. And I know it's not their fault, but it doesn't matter. It's not, yeah, we're not talking true. about whose fault it is. But, you know, a lot of the things are just not fully there when you really think that they should be. It's a Lucasfilm property. They invented, like, they more or less invented special effects. I think what offends me the most is the fact that the mirror trick no longer, or like the... um. Movie. That I doesn't bother that doesn't me. Ha- that bothers me immensely because I remember that. But you didn't see it move. I know, but just knowing it moved. Eh. Just knowing it moved made me happy. This is where we differ. Yes. We're, uh, no, on movies too. Yeah. We're like, ah, but this weird thing, whatever. I'm like, just just, just let it, just let the movie rush over you. I, okay. But, okay. So there are really immersive parts, like, you know, the, the thing with the door or whatever, but then just past there. It looks like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going down this hallway. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I'm i back to what you're saying. I guess, I, I, you know what I think, Indiana Jones, I really, my that's that, I think I just proved your point. My brain goes to the queue before the ride. Yeah, and that, that's, no. that's your Imagine whole point. Imagine being on the ride now. And yes. like you see the lights and the laser thing, like on the, through the eye. And then. Even the last scene when they're shooting at you, it's just like the, like. No, that's the worst. That was next. That, that was, was what I was going to say that next. That was bad. It's yeah. a flat wall with pipes sticking out of it. Mm-hmm. You didn't need to make the pipes stick out to shoot air. Mm-hmm. And then the floating heads, because there's a door at the end of it. It's They're really just painted weird. on. And it's just like, that was. It's funny that it goes from that room to the rock, you know, the boulder, which is really cool. That's probably the, one of the best areas. Yeah. But it's after you see that. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm back in. <laughs> the thing with, uh, like, just go to Home Depot and buy that bunch of those skeletons. Exactly. And put them in that room. There you go. And then it's already more immersive. Yeah. That's it. Uh, and the snake is pretty terrible. Oh, in a world where we have the Indominus Rex, <laughs> yeah, we can fix that snake. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean by it, it. Looks like a giant puppet. It, it doesn't look like an animatronic or whatever it's, it's supposed to be. It looks, a, like a, it looks like a puppet. Immersive rides that are just broken too much. Yeah. And then Al- it's not. It's not the worst on the list. It's like not the worst ride or the worst immersed ride. It's just like the potential of it is now yeah, gone. No, or what like, it once like it no longer lives up to what it was. Yeah, like something like Pinocchio is not immersive at all, but. Indie is, but it's broken. Broken. It's broken immersion. Exactly. Alice in Wonderland oh, has some I, good moments, and then you just get thrust into fantasy land. That outdoor area is terrible. Yeah. Because you can see the track. There's a couple feathers or whatever they're called or leaves or whatever. But at least, like, my thing is at least put some grass or, like, fake grass over that. They can't because it'll blow into the track. And that That's of... the thing, though, is, like, I wish we'll put turf or something. It just look, looks so, like, it's barren. A, you're still it, outside. It feels though. like you're, like, in a desert. And, like, the rock work matches the Matterhorn, but the Matterhorn has snow on it. This has nothing on yeah. it. It's just there. The That's what I'm saying is that. What, the, what no was matter, the ride before? 
What was it before? It's always Alice in Wonderland. So why not just cover the whole thing? What's the point of having that outdoor because area? Because then you have just like some huge building. Isn't that it. what all rides are? No, this hangs over the rest of the ride. You can't like build. Maybe you can't. Maybe there. Maybe there's some okay, kind of. Maybe there's kind of building code where they can't build over that since there's nothing below it. No, it's just the they queue. they can, but they just. It, you don't want. I like this ride though. The only thing I do like about this ride, it's a two story ride, so you feel yourself yeah. slowly inclining. So as I'm saying, you slowly incline, but the decline. You see the whole thing, and then it randomly has this teeny little indoor section yeah. where you see a cake. My eyes are still adjusting, yeah. <laughs> and then I get out the ride. I'm like, "Wait, what was what was there before? It was like it was a cake. Like my eyes were like trying to adjust to the darkness, but yeah. the darkness, the darkness. There is what was the line from the Kingdom Hearts three trailer? And of course, it's Kingdom Hearts. Anytime you say darkness, all right, it's Kingdom Hearts. It's like. I was going to start singing, but I'm not going to no, do it no. on there. <laughs> I don't remember. They're, they're just like, I'm not going to do it. Mm. Anyways, uh, then Guardians of the Galaxy. What breaks the immersion? Probably the... When the doors fling open and you hear, is that Disneyland? <laughs> like, no, Disneyland, that's that's thematically incorrect or something. He like makes a comment about it. There's different lines. But what's funny is like, I was like, that is Disney's direct response to people that say, it breaks the immersion. It's like, if we acknowledge it, then it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's not. No, it says that's them thematically inconsistent. That's one of the ones I heard. <laughs> I've never heard that one. Yeah, but I saw it online. I, yeah. And then there's like, you know, sometimes you just again, feel like you're the in The queue is great. Yeah, but sometimes you great. do feel like you're in Tower of Terror. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, can't you see the covered fireplace too? I think I noticed that. I don't ride that ride. <laughs> I haven't been in that yeah. queue in forever, so I don't I don't remember it. So it's it's just not quite there. Mm-hmm. Speaking of being not quite there, this whole section called Not Quite There. <laughs> <laughs> Monsters, Inc. You got some good things like the doors, right? And the sushi place. But then you just have the bad animatronics, okay. the random city. This ride, to me, I think it's the problem. It feels too stagnant. It feels too... Static. Static. Yeah. Because the movement is... Yeah, it's everything's just... A human kid. Yeah. Mike was out like just her arms are moving. So there's no movement. And it's like they're clearly not animatronics. We know they're not. I think my favorite room in that ride is the locker room. Cause it's again, I with like rides doors. like this, it's just super tight and you just see everything. And it feels like you're in a bathroom stall. I think the doors they put in the most effort. Because isn't one of them open and you see the Well yeah, that's like them? animated, yeah. yeah one of them's and that's animated. That's like that's a big deal to me. I think the worst um not animatronic, whatever you call yeah. it. Um, is when Boo is hitting Randall's head. She looks awful. She looks like a doll. But you're focused on like, Randall, you know? I'm looking at her. <laughs> looking at her bang. But yeah. No, it's not quite there. Yeah. So here's what's weird. Mm -hmm. Splash Mountain. That surprises me that it's on this list. Okay. So you are immersed in Splash Mountain. Mm -hmm. But that's it. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, you know, everything's themed. You're in water the whole time. The ceiling, there's, like, colors and plants and fake plants, whatever. But I think it's that we don't really have experience with that world. Well, we're not allowed to. Disney said we're not. But do you, get, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, you know what Star Wars is, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, oh, it feels like Star Wars. You know what Cars is. It's like even Song of the South, it's mostly live action. Mm -hmm. it's, you're not, it's like you didn't grow up with it. We don't know who Briar Rabbit is outside Briar of that. Rabbit. Briar Rabbit. Outside yeah. of that movie. We don't know who he is. Yeah, and... Like, it, it's just, I don't know. It, but, okay, where is it broken for you? It's not that it's broken. It's not quite there. It's an immersive ride, okay, but I don't yeah, know. What, what's not, what breaks it for you is my question. Or what's the thing that, like, it's not there yet? Because to me, I've only written it, like, twice, and I feel like it's pretty immersive. It, the music really loud. Because it just feels like I'm watching a movie. Okay. I'm disconnected from it. But isn't that every Fantasyland ride? But those aren't on this list. I know. My question is, why are those on those lists, but this one is? Why this one specifically? Because you still, you feel, in, you don't feel like you're on a ride. You feel like you're watching something, though. Do you Maybe know? that's why they added drops then. No, but it's like. Oh, we're a ride. No, in, a, you know? in a good way. Okay. Like, you're, you're in this world. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost like you're like in a, like a video game world, like a Kingdom Hearts world. No, no, I mean like it's a themed thing. You you're visiting, okay. But you're not part of the story. 
Mm-hmm. But it's more than just watching a story. It's it, not happening to you. You're watching it happen. You're just on, about? you're just you're just in a log. Okay. And it's like you know you're on a Disneyland ride too because it's just like it's Splash Mountain. I think a, you're right. You're right. And the, you know, it's all valid points. I think that is why in the queue you see those quotes from like a book. I think you're reading, quote, reading a book or you're, quote, watching a story play out. And the queue introduces you to that because if you look at the thing on top, it's got like quotes from the book. Like, I don't know what the words say, but like. But again. It's setting up the story. But, it's a story. But again, shout out to Matthew Serrano. Yes. I, I, I don't know if he retweeted it or I, I don't know. I don't think he made it, but. Mm-hmm. Just them telling you there's a backstory doesn't mean no, it's yeah, that. but I'm saying I, I I get what you're trying to say now. It's just not it's just not fully there for me. Mm-hmm. Even though I love it and it's themed really well, I don't know. I don't. I just don't feel like I'm in it, mm-hmm. like all the other rides. Jungle Cruise, like we didn't even talk about the ride, did we? No, we did not. <laughs> no. But here we'll t- we'll talk about it in, in in comparison here. Okay. You feel like you're on a on a cruise through a jungle, yeah. Like your skipper is is not in on that's it. very immersive again because you other than the Forbidden Temple, which is like part of the lore, yeah. you don't see anything else. Yeah. You're fully in that you're, line. You're you don't on. see, and it's, it's almost jarring when you see the queue. We're like, all right, we're back to the location. Yeah. It's almost jarring. Like, oh wait, we're yeah. we're in. You're, it. Yeah. you're on a river. Yeah. There's animals around. Like even it's big. Like the the right before the zebra thing. Yeah. Your track mm-hmm. stops like a hundred feet before the end of that scene. Mm-hmm. Like there's just stuff in the distance. Right. Real bamboo. Mm-hmm. Like you're, what is Jungle Cruise? I've never been on a Jungle Cruise, but I feel like I'm on one. Right. That's true. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you feel like you're in a place. I think that's the thing. You need something to compare something to. Yeah. Haunted Mansion, you're comparing to a mansion. Have I been in a cave? No, but caves are real. Yeah. You know, and is Star Wars real? No. But you know what Star Wars is, and it feels we know like that world to yeah, a point. Yeah, and it's a live action, so you know what you're in. And like, is there anything here that is a cartoon? Little Mermaid, mm-hmm. but you feel like you're there, except for the under the sea, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, jungle, but we, we jungle know cruise, we know what the ocean is, or like yeah, we, we know what we ruins know. are exactly. Like you yeah. know, we know what tigers are, we know what waterfalls mm-hmm. are. Yeah, but then you're here in Splash Mountain, and you're like, or not you, at least me. What, where am I? Yeah. You know, do I feel like, like, I don't feel like I'm outside, like where you normally are. Like the, even those like calm scenes, you're, you're encased in rock work once again, but like re like cartoony rock work. Yeah. But it's not, I don't know. I don't, I just feel like I'm on a really good ride. One of the best. Yeah. And yet not necessarily immersive. That's the thing. It could, it's still one of the top rides. Like, even though I don't go on it often, I will say it's one of my favorites or it's one of the best. Yeah. But something's missing. And maybe that'll change with Princess and the Frog, depending on how they do it. We'll see. That <laughs> If there's a Tiana animatronic, it needs to be like Belle from... Oh, the, the Tokyo one. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see, I guess. Yeah. Um, The submarines. It doesn't feel like you're on a submarine. You just feel like you're in a Dutch oven. <laughs> uh, it... Yeah, I hate that ride. Okay. And it's coming back in 2021. No, winter 2021. Which is like f- nine days before the, I was say before the world ends. Um, before the year ends. Before the year ends, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Star Tours. Here's a weird one. I like Star Tours. No, I love Star Tours. I think that's immersive. I don't. I think it does. I, ju- you just, I just feel like I'm on a plane with a bunch of other people. Yeah, it's a Star Wars plane, but the seatbelt sign is too on the nose too similar to real life i disagree Gal- okay the millennium falcon is nothing like the star tours vehicle. i'm not saying i i think star tours is the best ride ever mm. I, i'm just saying i think it's immersive what makes you feel immersed i think that's the point it's supposed to feel like an airport but it feels too much like an airport but like maybe that's what that's like we don't know what that world's like you kind of do in the prequels i've never seen the prequels yeah, exactly <laughs> It's just too similar. Okay. I like there's bags on the floor. That's the point. No, you're just in an airport. Okay. Well. Like it's the theming is really even the great. the spiel though, the bye-bye. Like like she sounds like a flight attendant. That's the point. But I don't want a flight attendant. I want a Star Wars flight attendant. Okay. She's she, just a robotic flight attendant. Okay. 
Sorry, droid. Whatever. Okay. But I, I like it. I don't. Okay. I don't feel like I'm in Star Wars. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? It doesn't have the feeling Galaxy's okay. Edge Before does. Before Galaxy's Edge opened, though, what were your feelings about that ride? Because now you're comparing it. Even the loading area. It's just ugly. It's not. It's weird. It feels old because it is old, yeah. even though they redid it. I feel like just that's part of it, though. It's part of the charm. But it of doesn't it. feel like Star Wars. Okay. Well, it feels like because it is a weird non canon side story. And as much as we give, like, like we insult Galaxy's Edge for trying to be canon, the fact that, like, Star Tours is so out of canon is a little odd. Yeah. So I, I just don't feel immersed there. As good as the ride is and as good as the theming is, like, it's on point with Star Wars. Like, everything's named correctly and, like, there's droids and all that kind of stuff and Easter eggs. Something's missing. I don't know what it is. Okay. And the cast members are just there. They, you know, they, it seems like they're in Tomorrowland uniforms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll agree with that. So I, I, I think that might be it. It's They're not. Okay. They can't be rustic like Galaxy's Edge. Mm. So then they need to be super clean. And they're not. They're like blue and orange and the orange has some weird. Okay, I think the reason why though is because this is supposed to be like a spaceport airport kind of thing where Galaxy's Edge is a planet. I know, but like if they're selling you on you you're on a tour and that's actually C three PO. Their uniforms need to be more like they work for My guess is they probably stuck with that aesthetic because of Tomorrowland. If they were to pick that up and move it, to, I know they won't. That's but the they, hill they died they on in probably, Tomorrowland. I, I know it sounds <laughs> like, stupid, but like you're right. But you said it. Their their costumes are very similar to Tomorrowland's costumes, so I yeah. think that was on purpose. Even like look at like the Buzz Lightyear ones, like different colors, same same type of angles, the, like the the look of them are very, even Space Mountain. Okay. Like I would argue, put them all side by side, people would probably be confused which the one was Space which. Mountain ones. Mm-hmm. If they were dressed like our buddy Neil Armstrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy who does the spiel. It's not Neil Armstrong. You know, he's got like the nice, the blue with the white. Yes. That would be a better Star Tours uniform. Yeah, you're probably right. That's what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's that easy. You already have it. So now here's the problem with the classic dark rides. Rain has said this. I don't know what it is, but it's supposed to be like you are the main character in the storybook, right? It was, well, and then people got confused and they threw the characters in there. So, yes. So now doesn't feel like you're in a storybook it just feels like you're reading one Mm -hmm. and that's how uh storybook land canal boats feels too Mm -hmm. i just feel like i'm reading a story i don't feel like i'm in the story right right. and i think that's just it and you know you feel like you're on a ride vehicle all that kind of stuff they are old they're not meant to immerse you i think but it's also digestible for kids like oh there's a character i know you know and it's moving slowly i can see everything yeah Oh, wow, Rain Rain got blue milk. <gasps> he did. Let me see. And with his cousins. And he saw Adam the Woo. Oh, that's cool. That is, wow. Uh, Rain's living his life. This is where he's at right now, guys, while I'm here. Yeah, roll, roll <laughs> Look at deep. that. We were just there. You didn't get blue milk this time. Okay, you didn't want blue milk either. So. No, I got my cold brew, which is delicious, which you guys will talk about next week. So, <laughs> so yeah, it that's just what it is with, with dark rides. Now, I feel like immersion is a balance. Yes. The music can't be too loud. What are you referring to? I don't know. What am I referring to? Avengers Campus. <laughs> and okay, the first time we went, I was like, yeah, I was annoying, but it was fine. But you made me very hyper aware of it last week when we went. And you're right. It's like, it like crescent, cres, 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 crescendos constantly. And yeah. And you, it's kind of like, okay, jump. Okay, not yet. Okay, we jump. It's like, you're right. There's yeah, no like, it would, it would be world. cool. If they played other bits of the score, okay, maybe like a Loki theme, maybe an Avengers theme, maybe a little bit of WandaVision, like kind of throw in different ones. But the fact that it's just constantly the Avengers theme, just different parts of the song. Yeah. After a while, I, I it started to great. Yeah. So I saw a recreation of it mm-hmm. on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is the actual length of the loop, but it sounds right. I think the loop is only 10 minutes long. <sighs> Grizzly Peak Airfield, granted, not original music. Mm -mm. That loop for just that piece, not the rest of Grizzly Peak, it stops at the entrance of the Grand Californian. Mm -hmm. So basically from Smoke Jumper to Grand Californian is an hour and a half long. (laughs) 
and Avengers Campus, the Marvel thing. Ten minutes. Yeah. Because you hear that. Boom, 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 and honestly, boom. we don't have confirmation on that yet, but I fully believe it's probably about ten minutes. Because yeah. we were in there, not I mean, we we rode a ride, but even waiting line for the restroom you get to and the getting bum, out. Bum, 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 like, I think the so problem quickly. with it too, though, is that it sounds very similar. So I don't even know where the loop starts and ends. It's just because it just yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, I, yeah. Anyways, back to immersion. You're right. That one, it takes me out of it because it's annoying. <laughs> That's why it takes me out of it. You know. Yeah. It, and Avengers Campus isn't playing music like that every day. It's like you could. That's the thing. It's funny to me. They should have music playing Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm, at Avengers this point, Campus, I'm glad they're not. Yeah. If it's going to be like no, this. Oh, yeah. It's going to be like that. Yeah, exactly. And the, the music in the beginning of Galaxy's Edge, like the entrance is kind of, kind of helps. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like the vehicles you're on really shouldn't be there. Like you shouldn't focus on them. What vehicles are you talking about? I'm sorry. Just on rides. This is, we're just talking oh, about okay. immersion. Yeah, just yeah. generally. Like you don't feel like you're sitting on that boat in Pirates. It no. The boat disappears. The boat disappears, yeah. You know, it's not important. Mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't really see too many show lights. And I know that's tough, but they were able to do it in Star Wars. They're, you know what I mean? Like all the, in Millennium Falcon. And I know that's not really, you know, it's a little cockpit. But like, if they could do it on Rise. Yeah. I know Rides are older and Rise is like brand new, but you know, you could do it. Mm -hmm. And then... But, you know, things need to be lit properly. But that's also but like, like the biggest casualty of that is like small world. Like that feels like you're like in the convention center room. Like it building. has a drop down ceiling. Yeah. Like, yeah. But that ride's not immersive at all. But I'm saying though that like that's like the worst. Like you want to look at a bad worst ceiling. Worst offender. That's yeah. the worst offender is look at that ceiling and it's like, yikes. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. But what can you do? Yes. Yeah. But Disney's pretty good at it. It's mm -hmm. there are enough where it's where they're great. And, uh, you know, I might think about this more often when I'm there. Yeah. And I would I've even argue, this. I know we have, we didn't really get it. We got into Trader Sam's, but I think the hotels themselves do a decent job for guests. Like I've stayed at the Disneyland hotel before in the adventure land. Yes. You're in a hotel room. I'm not trying to say you're in a jungle, but every tower has its own little theme. And you know, like they not don't fully commit because I, I don't think they want it to be too tacky. Grand California commits. Yes, but that theming, it's not necessarily a Disney theme. Yeah. Where the Disneyland Hotel, the theme there, I mean, it's adventure fantasy, but it's Disneyland adventure themed. It's Disneyland fantasy themed. It's Disneyland frontier themed. Where a Grand California, it's not trying to be, this is what Disney thinks a Grand California or like a, a wilderness hotel looks like. It just is. Yeah. You know, the only quote, um, character work in that is like the acorn store, but even there, it they sell things there. But the but the actual store is pretty. It looks like it's a cabin, yeah. you know. Yeah. But all in all, I, I hope. Well, up they try harder in the future, harder than Avengers Campus. But that's a converted land. They didn't tear it down. That's the thing. They yeah. Used, they used buildings that were already there. They used buildings that were there, and I think. I think what saves that land, the the immersion, what saves it to a point is definitely the characters. Yeah. Without the characters, that land would be depressing. It would be nothing. And they're very, with, with the way things are right now, with, you know, we can't meet them face to face. I really hope they do keep some elements, though, because, like, when we were eating, we saw Captain America yeah. off. Even non non pandemic times, that would be cool. Like, hey, you're eating. Hey, there's Captain America waving. Like that. Like that's what kind of like, everyone's looking up at things. It's not just you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, is it time? It is time. It's time for we have it so good. Well, before I do that though, what? <laughs> what I think is really funny. What? About the episode of immersion. Okay. When you're supposed to feel immersed and forget about other things. Yeah. Rain's not here. I know. Like right? it's immediately like yeah. different host. Yeah. We're talking about immersion, but guess what? You're the not tram, immersed. The tram and host is not here, but I'm but anyways. the second best. I hope no, I don't you're know. You're just a guest host. I'm a guest host. Guest host. Yes. I'm not a third you're, host. So calm down. Everybody. No, no, no third chair. <laughs> no third chair for me. All right. So. We have it so good. So we have it so good. It's when members of the Tram Fam, just like you, can write in 
with what they miss or appreciate about Disneyland and where we kind of recap recent trips. So, Kevin writes in, he loves having the Disneyland band. They are here. They are back. We saw them. We saw them. And that feels was good. Feels good. And They're- I forgot. I know that there's choreography, like they walk in a straight line, whatever. But, and again, we'll talk about it next week, but they, they do some little dance moves. Oh, like yeah, they're the like Indiana playing Jones. the trumpet and the guy was like. Oh, all, all of them like kind of like. I have a down video. Too. Yeah. It's yeah. like great. And then they all stand up straight. But yeah, it's like. I'm not a huge parade person, but I do really appreciate the band. Well, they they really, act like a marching band. Yeah. Because marching bands do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And even the conductor gets all into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love the band. And it's not on here, but I'm going to add Dapper Downs as well. I hope they come back soon. I love yeah. the Dapper Downs, especially during Halloween. It's my favorite time to see them. So Jackson, mm-hmm. Spoke Busters, we just love that username, <laughs> writes in, the chicken ratatouille from Lamplight Lounge is the best dish in the park, he says. There's a chicken ratatouille. I I only had the ratatouille. I did not know the chicken one. I'm and gonna then get that next he time. just gives a shout out to lobster nachos and open ocean with a splash, which may be the official drink of Tramon. Yeah, I think that is. I even I had a sip of that. That wasn't too bad. It was actually pretty good. Jules writes in. She misses living 30 minutes from Disneyland and going there every other weekend with her flex pass. Now she lives 16 hours away from Disney. Uh, R.I.P. And I didn't say this at the time because I felt bad. But right when I when I got that DM, I can hear Mickey's Mix Magic fireworks going off. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say I'm like, no, it's gonna sound like I'm bragging because oh, I'm no. not. It's loud, but yeah, uh, you wrote in. I did write in. Well, you didn't write in. You told me I while did. we were doing this park hopping. Yes, it's back. We did it. Feels good. We'll talk about it next week. But it, you could talk about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I'll t- briefly. We'll talk about it next week because the first three times we went, we just we're like, no, we want to appreciate. You know, because well, it was our first time back in over a year. Yeah, yeah it was the, not, not even just the price though. We were we appreciated every park for what it was. We opted to do to add to do the park hopping, and it was really great because again, I don't do full days at Disney really ever. We've been doing them because we have to. It was one of those things where halfway through the day it got so hot, we're like, let's just let's just jump, and it was so great to just have that option, just to mix up the scenery. Sometimes yeah. you kind of feel like you're stuck, screaming kids, it's hot. You know, I, let me just jump to a different park and like. Again, like we'll talk about, it, you'll talk about it next week, but it was a change of scenery, a different, it was something about, like maybe it's like a different group of people, different vibe. You want to know what's going on over there. It's like a new start to the day. Yeah. And then when you, we part, we hopped back to Disneyland. Yeah. It's like, oh, it almost felt like walking in after work. Yeah. Like, okay. Like how's everything doing now? Like everyone yeah. thinks kind of calm, calm down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I miss park hopping a lot. And then, uh, we actually got a DM. Ooh. Let me, uh. Open up the tram and phone. <laughs> All right. Paula Fries writes in. Hey, guys. Paula here. My family and I have been listening to your podcast for months. Ooh. I grew up in SoCal, and my mom would take me to Disneyland once a year, just her and I. Those are some of my fondest childhood memories. I now have kids of my own, and my awesome husband has agreed to let us take them to Disneyland once a year, even though we live in Colorado. Oh, I love that. We've made so many amazing memories with our family there, and we have missed Disneyland so much during the pandemic, but you two have made us feel like we were there. Love him him and Rain, not me. <laughs> <laughs> we're your biggest fans, and we hope to see you at Disneyland sometime soon and make our trip to meet you. Sincerely, Paul. That Perth. is so sweet. If you guys see them, please... Say hi and uh, ask for a sticker. Usually he carries stickers with you, right? I'll probably, I'm, I'm going to send them some yeah. stuff. If oh, yeah, you, or that yeah. too. But I'm saying in general, if someone sees you in the if, park. If you're listening uh, and you want some stickers, let me know. Let me know if you have any because we have some other ones that we haven't sent out because it'll happen. It's just, it's a pain. They're over there. But uh, we, oh. I want to show off. I have Kirk on my water bottle. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. Don't get cute. All right. No, well, someone at work noticed it. They thought you were wearing a mask. I'm like, no, it's his beard. It's your beard. So, and then uh, Rain responded to her and she said she was listening to the good, the bad, the and the IP. That was and last week or two weeks ago. Yeah. And yeah, uh, that was a good episode. And they'll, they'll be here soon is all we're going to say. Ooh. Okay. So, yeah. Let us know. I'm hoping that when we get past this back, you'll, it'll become more regular to see people because right now it's like. I'm going this day. Oh, I'm not going for another two weeks or whatever. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. that's that. That will be an issue. Yeah. Until then, but you should hide them around the park. <laughs> no, leave, I'm not. leave clues in the story. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> litter no, I'm not with, with trim and stuff. Uh, just making sure that we didn't get anything in. Uh, or, hold on. Let me just be right back. Okay. So, what did we do this week or last week, Kimmy? Last Tuesday, we went to Trader Sam's Enchanted Tiki Room. We did. So, yes. you get out of work earlier than I do. Yes. You go into work earlier than I do. Yes. And you joined the list at 4 p.m. when it opened, right? Slightly after. Well, so, really quick. So, up until, so they opened, I think, July 3rd or like the weekend of July 4th. And everyone said you need to join the walk-up list. So you walk up there, you join a virtual list, whatever. I'm there at like 3.30. I take my time, walk over, whatever. It's 4 o'clock, comes and goes. I open the app. Nothing opens up. And I saw a line to the left of me forming. And I was like, okay, like it, they're probably just going to all join, whatever. Nothing happened. Eventually, a cast member walked past. And I asked her, I said, how do I join the line? She's like, oh, you need to join the physical line now. She says, so the virtual line's gone now. So I was probably like the 10th or 11th person in line, I would say. I w so I joined the line around like 410, let's say. I was at the front line by like 430. Oh. And by then, they were already full. So I put my name down to add us to the list. It worked out for us because he was going to come later. But um, if you wanted to be there right at 4, start lining up like at 330, I And would it's say. like you, you put your name in at Tongaro Terrace. The, yes. So well, people were trying to form a line for the Trader Sam's. From what I'm told, there's a host of San Francisco Terrace. That's where you do everything. Yeah. Right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the so you said around 4:30. Yeah. We got texted at 5:25, mm -hmm. and then we walked over from. And I was told it would be two hours. They, they said one to two. They, so so this is what happened. So the indoor seating, I was she told me that there was a 90 minute limit. She goes, so the reason why I'm giving you two hours is because just i rather give you more time than less. That's what the host told me. She goes, and um, you're, I was the, quote, first person on the list that was not going to be seated yet. Everybody before me got seated immediately. So she's like, I'm going to give you two hours because. Who knows how long. Who knows. Time. They might leave sooner, might leave later, whatever. I opted to go inside because I've never eaten there before. There is outdoor, and that does go faster is what I'm told. The day I went, I was told there's only one server for outside. So she was saying you might be waiting longer for the outdoor area. Yeah. So. So yeah. It was did, so it was about fifty five minute wait. Yeah. So we did eat inside, mm -hmm. and here is what we got. Mm -hmm. So their price is listed in the app. Oh, cool. But the pricing on our receipt was lower. Was it the AP? And then there was the discount after. So I think the app was inaccurate, or they hadn't raised the prices yet. Maybe they just did. Maybe they just did. Oops. So yeah. I got the tiki 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 rum, mm -hmm. and that's got pirate exo reserve rum. Cream of coconut and juices of pineapple and orange dusted with cinnamon and nutmeg. So this is, ba it's pretty, m it's like a pina colada, but it's not slushy. There's just ice in it and there's cinnamon and it's like an horchata a little it bit. It gave me a fruity horchata taste when yeah. I tasted it. Yeah, very fruity horchata. And this was fourteen fifty, mm -hmm. and the discount does not apply to drinks. Oh, okay. Discounts don't apply to alcohol. Okay, right. I don't know if it's a law or if it's an excuse, but anyways... Mm -hmm. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. I always get this thing. Mm -hmm. You thought it was okay, but you... I don't drink, though. So yeah. for me, I'm not the best person to ask. Yeah. So. <laughs> but you got the Polynesian Punch, which mm -hmm. is a non-alcoholic drink. Mm -hmm. It is Sam's Gorilla Grog and Hibiscus Grenadine for mm -hmm. five bucks. Mm -hmm. And you said it tasted like a pineapple threw up on you? Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was a very powerful pineapple taste. Okay. For someone that doesn't drink, I always have a hard time with non-alcoholic versions of drinks because it's just a sugary drink at the end of the day. So there's nothing to offset. There's no alcohol to offset that taste. Having said that, this was really good, but like I also ordered a water next to it. So I was like in between sips drinking water. Yeah. So it was really good. I, I'll probably try it again, but, um, or try the other, I don't know what the other one is, but um, it's not like if you want that tiki, like a drink in your hand feeling, but you don't want to drink, that's, that's a good option. Yeah. yeah. And then it finally happened. You got to have the infamous, chicken wings. the the ever out of reach, sweet and spicy chicken wings served with togarashi aioli. Yes, for seventeen bucks, mm -hmm. but we paid thirteen bucks for some reason. Again, I don't know what's Maybe up with the price. Maybe that guy was just a homie. That guy was nice. The guy that served us. I no, because everything was keyed lower, and we oh. got a different guy the second time. Oh no, we didn't. 
Halfway through a shift, some guy switched yeah, out. But halfway through. We were, like, I, I we were done eating by then, though. I yeah. don't know what was up. Yeah, yeah. Kimmy, how are the wings? Mm -hmm. How were the wings? They were amazing. They were really good, but that was my second time having them. The first time I had them was at the Grand California Hotel. No, those are different. Oh, they are? Yeah. Okay. Those have togarashi on them, but not togarashi aioli. Oh. But they're not sweet and sticky. I feel like they were. No, they were They were more crispy, and they, they didn't have, like, that that sticky sweetness. They were more like, uh, these were a lot sweeter for sure. You know what? These and had I, the sesame I, on them. I, you're right. They were sweeter. I just thought that they were paired differently. I didn't know that they were completely different. Oh yeah. They're, they're different. Oh, ones. okay. Very good. Very, very you, good. That's something to definitely, I did come with like seven pieces. I think, I think I yeah. had like three, like four. Yeah. But you didn't really touch good. the aioli. I, I tried a couple times. Yeah. It was okay. It's mayo. I'm not a mayo person, so I'm the wrong person to ask. I love that aioli. Yeah, I put, it. I slathered each wing in that. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I, I want more. We could, you know, we get a mobile order from Tangaro Terrace. Yeah, because we're not gonna. They have uh, the same food there. Mm, right. Breakfast too. <laughs> I want that loco moco. I want that to that toast. The Tangaro yeah. toast. And then. We also ordered the Angus Half Pound Hawaiian Cheeseburger with grilled pineapple, applewood smoked bacon, Havarti cheese, butter lettuce, tomato, no onions, and sweet and spicy spread served with sweet potato fries. So the sweet and spicy spread, it, there were two things. There was like a, like a vinegary teriyaki sauce mm -hmm. and also something that was similar to the togarashi aioli, but I think it was sriracha. It wasn't spicy though. I put a ton of that on there. You didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I really liked it. That's you didn't. Good. You didn't have pineapple on yours. It was like fine. The flavors are really good though. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. That's the best way to explain it. But the burger itself, eh. Yeah. But the fries were really good. Sweet potato. Yeah, fries. I'm not a sweet potato person really, but the fries were very, very good. Yeah, and that Delicious. was we paid sixteen. Supposedly it's eighteen, but so it was, weird. Maybe they're gonna we're gonna up the price eventually. Who yeah. knows? But it was good. But uh, right after that, we got the piranha pool. You got the piranha pool. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you liked it. You took a few sips of it. It was the slushy. Oh, with the piranha mug. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That was so, good. So uh, that's a Stoli Strasberry vodka blended with pineapple juice, cream of coconut, strawberry puree, and blue curacao. But it's blended like an icy or mm -hmm. slushy. With really tall I straw. think that's what does it for me with alcohol is if it's like in a slushy form, it's like the water almost like... It immediately waters it down. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's why I didn't mind yeah. it. Yeah, but, and uh, That was so good. Do you have the mug? Yeah, it's downstairs. <sighs> okay. It's a really sweet piranha mug you got with it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, maybe I'll post a picture. Okay. Mm, no. Oh, yeah. It could be the uh, Trader Sam's part of the immersion yeah. post. There you go. Uh, yeah. Because uh, the guy was like, hey, you want the mug? Yeah, I don't even, I don't even, he's like, yes. I, was like, I don't even care what it looks like. Just give me the mug. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, he was like gold or green. And then some guy on the left heard and he holds his up. He's like, this is a green one. <laughs> like, green. Yeah. The green looks cool. I yeah. The gold the looks one. awesome, but I feel like it's going to get ruined. It's going to get a lot of smudges on it. That was my worry with it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I might buy it and display it though. Oh, geez, it's okay. just gold. It's ostentatious. It's yeah, wonderful. It's very. And, uh, you <laughs> without realizing at like 20 minutes in, you're already shorter than me. I am. But you were like, you were like at hip length. Yeah. <laughs> so height. I was sitting there and I look over at Kirk and he's like, like I'm looking up at him and I'm like, why are you so much taller than me? Like, what? and I, I look, and then I looked at the seats and I saw my seat was significantly lower. And I was like, and the bartender was like, ah, it happens sometimes. Yeah, he'll, I, he'll, I like, and it was like, he'll I like, go back I up. like got his attention. I was like, oh, this is lower. And he's like, is it broken? Like, I think I even said, is it broken? He's like, oh, like it'll, it'll fix. Like, just don't worry about it. I ended up getting up and kind of like, yeah. pulling. Event, it kind of slowly pulled its way back up. And I noticed so, yeah. there was a cutout in the floor of it. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's weird. Right. And then later on, we were in uh, Wonderground. Wonderground. So we went after we were done down to Disney. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, we'll come back yeah. real quick. But yeah, uh, you n saw some art of Trader Sam's and the chair you were sitting in, in the art, was lower. And then we looked it up. It's a trick chair. It's a trick chair. The bartenders can raise and lower them. Yes. And they do it to people who are buzzed to kind of freak them out a little bit. Yeah. And there's one on each side. Yes. And you'll notice there's a square cut out on the ground. It, right now it's a signed seating, but if you can grab it, go ahead. Yes. Uh, lots of fun. So I read, I read up on it. So, okay. So I didn't notice I was being lowered. I had, 
I, I walked so in, slow. I have no idea how, so I, I don't even remember what level it was at when I first, I would have noticed it no, immediately. It was, I think it's at normal And level, I guess man. apparently it's that the bartenders control it and they do it slowly throughout the night. And they say, and, and from what I read online, most people do not catch it until they're already yeah. as low as they are. And so this bartender had a straight face and was like, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. Like it'll, it'll raise back up. Don't worry about it. I didn't know it was a trick. And again, it, you were took, insisting it, was it broken. took the literal artwork for me to, cause if you look at the artwork, it's like people are sitting down and the guy sitting on the seeking chair is kind of making a face like confused. And it's so funny. I couldn't find it on any official Disney stuff. I only found it in like two very obscure blogs from like 2008, 2009. Like no one else was talking about it. Like I, I looked up vlogs. I looked up, at, you know, all the Disney nerds, but I loved it so much. It's cause I don't get surprised anymore at the Disney parks. I rarely get surprised by things. Know like everything. I know everything. And this was one of those pure, I found out about it because I was there. I didn't look for it. It wasn't like I looked for that spot. It wasn't like I knew about the sinking chair trick. I knew nothing about it. And the bartender didn't even offer like, oh, let me explain how this didn't just, oh yeah, that's weird. Like very, I like mixing a drink while he was talking to me. Very like, oh yeah, like that's, that's kind of okay. Like it'll fix. Don't worry. Like very just, okay. I always feel the most surprised at the hotels because one, I don't watch vlogs, but two, like influencers and whatever, they don't really document the hotels too much. You know what I mean? Like, you know how hard it is to find a none. None of the big vloggers have ever covered the Paradise Pier Hotel because yeah. no one goes there. The but only I mean, ones like, I've seen have been like those vacation family videos. Like that's only yeah, let it go but there. Like, like even like the stuff we saw that just all the Sleeping Beauty artwork on the walls mm -hmm. and the castle. Like no one covers that stuff because not it's, that I've it's seen not that, a yeah. park. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I always get the most surprised. But yeah. I love. I kind of want to buy the artwork now of the sinking chair because it reminds me. Like it's like I, like that's a memory for me. Like oh my god, and I feel like I just spoiled it for everybody. But like now you're gonna notice like oh yeah, this chair sinks. Like it's so. Or you might be watching someone slowly sink. Just kind of slowly watch somebody at the end. Just see if they sink. It's hilarious. Yeah, and so yeah, I love that. I love all the antics they have for all the different shipwreck. Drinks. Yeah, there's the shipwreck. There's Krakatoa. Like, yeah, it's so. They have the little. Yeah, the horn. You know what they didn't do this time? What? Uh, normally when they're like, they yell about Krakatoa, mm -hmm. someone will take a spray bottle full of water and they go, pss, pss, oh. pss, and they spray it all over everyone. That's and it's so, funny. it's so funny. I love that. But for some reason they didn't do it, but it's, it's mm -hmm. so good. And like, there's all the effects. There's the ship in the background yeah, and like the, yeah. the two windows. And like even the bartenders are like, somehow we're in between two volcanoes <laughs> that are exactly the same. Like, you know, it's. They're, They're like self-aware, but yeah. also really into it. it, it that's my first time. So I talked to Jessica, my sister, Jessica, she's claims we've been in there before. <laughs> I don't remember. I, I've, I've had, I've been there before, but eating outside. I do not remember ever being inside, at least sitting and eating in there. I might've gone in there to look at it, but I don't think I've ever actually sat and had a meal in there. So yeah, yeah I, I had just, I had the best time. It was great. And I, and, and to give a little, a little backstory to that. We came from work. You rushed there. I had been there for a couple. I was like, it was super it was hot. hot yeah. We both looked like, like we both saw each other like, hey, and we we're just like zombies about it. But it was like, as soon as we were in there, it completely flipped. Like we were in such great mood. We were ordering all the food. We were sitting and talking. And again, we didn't feel, we were probably in there for what, like an hour? I have no idea. But like, we never felt rushed. The bartenders were cool with us. Um, everyone just chill. Yeah. It, it was, was just really nice. And maybe because it was a Tuesday, it didn't feel rowdy. It didn't feel like a lot of people were in there. Um, yeah. And it's funny because we were sitting at the bar. We didn't request our spot. They gave us our spot. There were these girls that really wanted the bar. And they kept not, I guess they had to figure out who sat. They couldn't move people around because of what's going on right now. So I felt like we lucked into a really good spot. Like we didn't look for that spot. We didn't ask for those chairs, but we just lucked into it. And now I'm like. Maybe because it was a, maybe because I was there when they opened, maybe because it was a Tuesday, but we got very lucky for yeah. sure. Yeah, and they, they'd probably they'd rather put small groups at the bar because they have chairs and their tables and stuff, but it never yeah. filled up in there. No, and I'm curious if that was intentional. I don't think it was. Maybe it just people didn't go after the initial like, oh, it opened. Maybe because even the thing Tonga is, Terrace We did was eat like at five though, maybe like seven, eight, nine, like a night yeah, people started getting there. But what's nice though is that even with the hour, two hour wait, you can go down to Disney. Yeah. Usually, but they'll text you and you have 10 minutes. So we had to run back, but like, even then we were fine, yeah. you know? And uh, we were there. I checked the pictures. We were there about an hour 20. Yeah. So good, good amount of time. And again, like, you know, we use a restroom a couple of times. Like we didn't have to leave. We were, everything we needed was in there. You know, like, like we had water, we had Talk food. to your restrooms. 
Yeah, the Russians aren't bad. The women's Russian is okay. It's yeah. I don't know. It was, uh, it was I don't I don't know what goes it on. It was there. messy a couple times I was in there, but again, you know, I don't it's a yeah. restroom. Well, know? there's this whole thing going on with custodial right now. Oh, okay. Third shift custodial. I know that's not third shift, but there's this whole thing going on with them and staffing and all that. Yeah. But uh It yeah. was nice though. It was nice. Yeah, no, I it was just chill. It was just so chill and relaxing because yeah. there was just we're just there we're just hanging out and then after that we didn't spend a lot of time in downtown disney we spent more time in the hotels in the hotel disneyland hotel we walked around there yeah, we looked at a couple of buildings we used the restroom you bought that shirt in the oh yeah i bought this yeah trader sam's shirt you want to uh, show the back show the back it's, there you go yeah. uh <laughs> I mean, we got that at the hotel I don't runs know a little it. big i don't know if they're selling it anywhere else but it was at the hotel yeah at the fantasia shop Yes. So if you want that shirt, get it there. Yeah. And they had other Trader Sam stuff there. I think, yeah, there's right? some other stuff. And yeah, we just walked around. Yeah. Uh, we didn't buy any treats or anything. The only thing, oh, I did buy the dispenser. Oh, yeah. You bought that ahead of time. So it's still in I stock. bought the dispenser. It's still in stock. Uh, you got to be careful with it. Like if you have a kid that just, bam, it's not going to work. You have to like line it up, slowly lower it. It's, it's really cute though. And it smells great. The soap they have in there smells really great. I love it. Oh. I've used it a few times already. It's great. And just pro tip for everyone buying that you, when it runs out, you need to refill it with foaming soap, mm -hmm. not regular soap. Target sells it in bags. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Personal favorite, lavender and bergamot <laughs> or bergamo. I don't know. But yeah, great time. Uh, I, I would love to go back. I don't want to do the rushing from work thing again, though. That was an issue for me. But that's not your fault. No, 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 I no. Rushed no. Out but of the there. thing is, though, is that it's going to be worse on the weekends. So we might have to just do that again and. No, I know, Deal but like it. it'll be more like I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. But uh Yeah. Good time. Or be willing Hi to get there at six and just wait till like nine. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. But uh highly recommended. Uh you guys will probably have a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's time for our closing segment. One last bite. Oh. <sighs> Okay, fine, fine. We'll talk about it. Because I'm here. It's, it's not time for one last bite. It's time for our movie of the week. Yes, and we saw it together. Black Widow. Yes, I went to a movie theater. I was not dragged there. I offered. I said, I'll go. And as and to be to make it nice, we went to a nice, we went to one of those sit down, pull up your no, That's chair. the only place I'll ever go. I don't care what I love. No, movie I need theaters. Rever, uh, I reserved. Love, I'll go to any budget theater you no, have. I, I love watching movies. So in I just need reserved. I don't care about the chairs. See, I don't. I don't care. I no. So I don't want to deal with this. Like Kirk get there, there early. Though, this was my first theater experience since last August. So last August, I drove all the way to San Diego to watch Tenet because I was just desperate to watch it in I a theater. Remember this. I did not want to go because I, I do not watch Christopher Nolan movie at home. That's that's a crime. But this was my first experience, and like. I did debate just getting it for $3 and owning it online on like, but I really wanted to like watch it in a theater. Um, yeah, we went to the lot in Newport, which was a really nice theater. Fashion Island. Fashion Island. Yeah. Uh, um, except for one chair there, which was the chair I sat in <laughs> and it was crooked. So I couldn't recline it. Oh uh, so. yeah. That was fine. But anyways, let me ask you first what you thought of the movie. I liked it. Okay. Uh, didn't really feel too MCU ish. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like that there was an intro sequence. No spoilers, guys. Don't worry. No, won't spoil it. Don't worry. Uh, felt like a little classic that way, like an intro credit sequence, that type mm -hmm. of thing. Pretty dark, which I liked. Mm -hmm. um, it, was a, it was a fun movie. Yes. Uh, I don't think any time Marvel tries to get deep with dialogue, I think they come off as cringe, mm -hmm. like the script. And I just personally don't think Scarlett Johansson is good at delivering lines. As Black Widow, at least. I haven't really seen her in anything. I've seen her in Lost in Translation. Great movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but she just, I don't believe her when she's saying things. Mm -hmm. Acting? Yeah, fine. But just when she's talking, I'm like, I don't believe you. I don't believe that you're sad or broken. Like, mm -hmm. she's trying to be stoic, but it doesn't come off right. Yeah. And just not like, oh, she sounds like this or that. Like, none of that weird stuff. Just like, I just don't believe her. Whereas all the other actors are great. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever her mom is. Rachel Weisz. Yeah. I think like she acted well. She's one of the. I don't know who she is. One of the great actors. Yeah. yeah actors but, that we have right now. Yeah. So generally I liked it. It was fun. Uh, some cool stuff. Uh, maybe shocking. Not shocking, but like good reveals, like mm -hmm. good, like fantastical type things. 
I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Uh, and again, just as always, some of these fights, man, it's just like, all right, we're going to fight for 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just every Marvel movie. You know what you signed up for. But I liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, glad we went. Uh, looking back, should have got popcorn. Yeah. I told you to get it. I know. Well, you were saying before, I'm going to get popcorn. And then you never, you never it got was, it. It didn't look like a theater with popcorn. It did have popcorn. <laughs> I assume they had popcorn. Yeah. You but can looked, like order a meal at your seat yeah, if you wanted no, to. Those, yeah. those kids next to me, that, that was the best smelling french fries oh, I've God. ever smelled. Yeah. Okay. What did you think? Okay. So I thought about it because I walked away with a mixed opinions on it. I, again, no spoilers. The first 10 minutes of that movie is the best, yeah. I think, really in any Marvel movie. I think it had the best opening credits, the best opening f- scenes. This is what my problem is. I wish this was a prequel. This is not Just a like prequel. like a full on prequel. Yes. Because, and again, I don't want, I'm trying not to spoil it. I'm really trying not to. This takes place in between some other movies. I don't know if that's a spoiler, so I won't say when. This takes place in between certain movies. We already know, if you've seen Endgame, we know what happens to Natasha. Now, people were upset online. Like, why didn't they mention, you know, like in the trailer, you see David Harbour, Rachel Weisz, and Flo Pugh and everybody. Like, they play, like, who they play. Everyone's like, how come they haven't mentioned before? That doesn't bother me. Because, yeah, because you know, Captain America doesn't mention his family with the Avengers movies. Like, Iron Man doesn't mention, like, pepper every second i mean he mentions her but like they're not important to the story happening right now right so that doesn't bother me but i do wish we got this movie like five years ago and it was set even earlier yeah um but i don't i don't mind it but like that's my biggest thing i wish it was set earlier and i will say a couple characters felt a little cartoony to me yeah that's marvel's thing yeah but like like they don't take things too yeah, but okay, sometimes like, there's a that's moment why to be my, For me personally, my favorite, I think I love the Captain America movies a lot because they feel the least cartoony to me. Because they're grounded in. Yeah, because yeah. even like Iron Man, like I, I was telling you the other day, like how Pepper Potts sounds like the most cartoony name, but it is a comic. But something about Captain America, like the whole Bucky and Steve thing, people have their okay, opinions on that. So like, but that does feel like, hey, you know, soldiers have PTSD. They go through some weird stuff and they have this alliance towards, you know, freedom or like Captain America, freedom, America, whatever. But this one, I think they could have gone a lot darker if they wanted to. I want to know more about the Red Room. I want to know more about Natasha's upbringing because th- she briefly mentions like what happened to her in the Red Room. I think in the Avengers movies, one of them, she talks about what goes on in there. It was a lot of tell, don't show. I think that's my problem with this movie. There was a lot of telling. Yeah, but some of the showing might be, like, too much, you know? Yeah, but I think... But I'm saying, though, like, you know, I forget what movie it is. When she tells, when she tells people what the, what happens in the Red Room when you graduate, your graduating ceremony, right? She, it, in another movie, she talks about what happens in that room, right? They don't show they don't show it, but they heavily... Imp- like, they show clips of what happens before that, and they heavily imply it. That is the line right there. I don't want to see it, but I want you to get as close to the line as you can, and I feel like this movie... We just need to, we need to set, we need to set up the next phase. Like, I felt like this movie was meant to set up next phase, but we already know what happens to Natasha. So there was not a lot of suspense there for me, but stay for the, stay for the end credits though. Yeah. So, okay. That, that will help you a lot. But again, this felt like a, we made this whole movie for that end credit scene. Yeah. So, okay. Civil War is required reading for the movie. Yes. And... Falcon and the Winter Soldier is required reading for the end credit scene. Unfortunately, that's true. And that's the thing. It, we are coming it to that zero point. Sense. We are coming to that point right now in the MCU. You need to watch the shows. Yeah. I mean, not okay. not the shows before this. WandaVision, Loki, Falcon, you need to watch those shows. Yeah. It's and I know we're not we're not talking about Loki right now. The, the season finale just happened at Loki. Watch it. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. You need to watch Loki. Because yeah. you will be very confused the next few movies if you don't watch Loki. And it's also just amazing. It's really good. I love the show. Um, okay, so that's it for, that's it for Black, Black Widow for me, but to Loki really quick. Um, some comic information will be good for you if you don't read the comics. I don't read the comics. Huh? I was confused at the end. I had to look things up. No, okay. So here's what I'm saying, though. If I, I just saw what the end was about. Yes. You don't need to know that, though. They'll tell I, you later. 
Yes, but I, I don't work like that. Yeah. I have to know answers today. Like that's okay. Me, but so. here's, here's the issue. Yes. Here's the issue I have with that. Mm-hmm. Let's say Mr. Robot. It has no source material. Mm-hmm. When there's a cliffhanger at the end, you're not meant to know more. The end of Loki, you're not meant to know more. You just happen to have the luxury of comics existing for 50 years or yes. whatever it is. Yeah. And that's where you're like, you're kind of spoiling what they're going to tell you next. Yeah. And I almost wish I didn't know, but it's not that bad where you know. like I, I'm still, they take from the comics, but I don't think any of the movies or characters have completely followed a comic by the book. Each one. But the ending is always the same. Okay. That's so, okay. the thing. All right. So let me just say right now. We've had a crazy month, MCU fans, because we had Loki going on. We had Black Widow dropped in the middle of it. And then I saw this one where it's like WandaVision reentered people's minds again because they got nominated for a lot of Emmys. Falcon got an Emmy for Don Cheadle, go figure. But like, I feel like now people are like overwhelmed with Marvel. And it's funny because our next movie literally comes in two months, but it already feels too long. Because <laughs> you got Shang-Chi in the, in the Ten Rings, which I, he's a new character for us. We don't know what he's about. The only thing I know is that 10 rings were mentioned in Iron Man, which was, yeah, what, 12 years ago, 13 years ago now. So who knows? Two months after that, we got the Eternals. Two months after that, we got Spider-Man, which very, very excited for Spider-Man, mm. especially after this last, especially after Loki, I'm excited for Spider-Man. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, well, that's, that's our Marvel rant. I wanted to talk about it really bad. Yeah. So we're done. Well, Marvel roundup. So now yes. this time <laughs> for real time for one last bite. Yes. Let's talk about food. Kimmy, what is the best food you ate this week? <sighs> this one was hard for me. I thought about it. Docking Bay 7. I got my precious Felution spread, but that wasn't the best thing I had. Ooh. You gave me a bite of your pasta and your, what was it, roast beef? Pot roast? Pot roast. I don't know what that's called, but that was delicious. I only really? Had like, I only that had was the best thing? I think so. I would have swapped with you. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, next time. It was really good. And then with that, I also had the cold brew. I forget what it's called. Oh, okay. Well, let's, with the let's, cocoa puffs on it. On, let's go back though. The funny thing about the pot roast. Yes. It has kale in there, yes. which is good. Yes. I like that it had some veggies. A lot of mushroom in there. I liked the pasta though. No, but the f- the sauce was mushroom, I think. I oh. think what you don't like is what I don't like with Texture. mushrooms. The big chonky bits of mushroom. Chonky. So that had... Uh, I don't think they were. There's chanterelles and some other one that are very, they're skinny. The mushroom is almost like a noodle. Okay. So the texture is still a mushroom texture, but because it's not a slab yeah. of like pizza mushroom yeah. or like, you know, the ones at the market, mm-hmm. it's not the same. So you, cause like even the loco moco bao, mm-hmm. the sauce was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Did you have the sauce? I think I, I thought it was fine. I had a little bit of it. Yeah. But it didn't bother you the way some ugly mushroom would. No. It didn't bother yeah. Me. All right. So now, yeah, the best sweet. Yeah. Was that cold brew? So there is the, what is it called? Like the black calf cold brew? Black calf something. Black yeah. calf is what they call coffee in Star yes. Wars, apparently. Apparently. But it was a cold brew with cream cheese, but you don't taste the cheesiness. Don't worry. And cocoa puffs. It was really good. It was good. really good. It was, you need the cocoa so puffs. So this is the thing. I wish there wasn't ice in it. This is the thing. I was afraid to get it because I thought it'd be too sweet. So I said, just order one. So we ordered one. The first sip I took, it was kind of bitter. It gave me a very because the because the, the cream cheese hadn't settled yet, and the the cocoa puffs were still there. Grab a spoon and mix. I it. I let it sit for a while, and then we we mixed it. When you have cereal, eventually that starts to bleed a little bit into the milk. So you had the taste of the chocolate, that cheese kind of the cream, the cheese. It the, just the tastes cream, like a mocha. The almost. cream kind of yeah, kind of settled a in a light mocha. And what I loved about it was the ice was like the soft crunchy ice so it was like that soft like, it wasn't like hard to bite into so when you took spoonfuls of it you got spoonfuls of cocoa puffs and spoonfuls of the ice i and just it was, wish there was no it was, ice it was gr- i loved the ice it eh. was great but it, it, yeah that was really good I'm to find what it's called. for me uh the best food you have trouble there just... no i'm looking at the word for it go ahead i don't know let's we're still on it okay oh found it uh the new cold brew black calf. Yeah, you were right. <laughs> Just cold brew black calf. Cold brew black calf. That's yeah. uh, real creative, Disney. Well, people are going to be like, what is it? Is, it, is, there, is there coffee in it? Is there coffee? They, all right, right, it's cold yes. brew. It's cold yeah. brew. Don't worry about it. Okay. My best thing was the chicken sandwich at Pim's. 
That was really good. I couldn't good. believe how good that was. That was delicious. Rain I'm under. That. I'm getting. Yeah. Last time he was like, hey, it was fine. I'm getting it. Next Rain time. doesn't undersell anything. <laughs> it was, he loves okay, everything. To be fair, the ours was nice and cr- cr- like crispy. Was, what if his wasn't crispy? This was like. The crisp. I wish there was a spicy version of it. That's what I want. I want like a, a little bit of a spice to it, but it was really good. Yeah, it was. It's definitely. It's got to be panko. It was a lot like chicken. Yes. So you know what it was like? It was like chicken katsu, but it didn't peel off. You know, a lot of times because they chop up chicken yeah. katsu and the top comes off. It, mm. That did happen like once when I cut it. But yeah, just pick that thing up by the little tiny bun and, and eat it. That thing was so it was really the texture, nice. the flavor. I love fried things. I needed a little more slaw, but that's fine. I, I like that. I was just eating a chicken breast. Right. And that's the tots. Fine. They're fine. I like the tots. They were, they were bad. Yeah. Uh, and then. Best sweet for you. The best sweet. I don't know. Like. I had a bite of your chocolate chip cookie from Marceline's. That thing was really good. Oh, we, for, oh, yes, we went to Marceline's afterwards. Yeah, so after Disneyland, yes, uh, not not down to this day. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, when did I record? Like we, I recorded last Friday or Saturday. Last Saturday. Last Saturday. A week and a half ago, the Saturday morning. And then, oh, and then we went to Black Widow. Yes. Yeah, Hop Dotty. We, we didn't get any sweets that day. Can I see? What did we do Sunday? Oh, we went to uh, Los Rios District. We got coffee and stuff. We didn't get a treat there, though. Yeah, no sweets. So, yeah. That, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, it's got to be the bite of that chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. I don't think. Did I get anything from Trader Joe's? No. The boba ice cream? But you had that with rain. No, no, yeah. That was yeah. a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, it's got to it. be just that. Because yeah. I got that pineapple cookie. I'll talk about it next week. It was fine. But mm-hmm. it can't be a chocolate chip cookie. Mm-hmm. You, just, good. you good. just cannot beat that. All right. What I did want to get though, and we ran, they closed early. I wanted to get those churro gears from Maurice's treats. I oh, yeah. really, I never had them, but that's going to be next on our list for next time. Oh, yeah. They close at seven though, and then I think yeah, we'll, moves close we'll, early we'll too. Get yeah. that with. We'll, we'll grab those. We'll with grab a midday coffee, yeah, yeah, and then go get those. Yeah, that'll be delicious. Sure. Okay. All right. It's time for the one last bite game. Ooh. Immersed in food. So here's some rules. Don't don't read it. Okay. Magically. Disney magic. This is going to be clean. You don't get dirty from it. The temperature you feel and the temperature you taste, exactly what you want. Just imagine there's no like, okay, you know, weird stuff, okay. even though it's super weird. Would you rather be inside of a bow or wrapped up in a warm tortilla? Tortilla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. I think I'd be in a bow. I'm gonna be immersed in a bow. No, I want that hug. I would feel claustrophobic in a bow. At least tortilla, I know, where, I know, I know where it ends. So I can stick my head out, and I can control how much I want to be immersed. All right, all right. Uh, it's just, a bow is just so soft. But like, it's like a bean bag. But like the expression is like wrap yourself like a burrito. Like I want to be wrapped like a burrito in a warm flour tortilla, in a mission tortilla from DCA. Super soft. Exactly. Uh, which cereal would you want to? Hang out in. There's milk too. I, f- I feel like Rice Krispies. I was thinking like Cocoa Crisps or what's it called? Cocoa Pebbles or Puffs? Cocoa Pebbles. Really? I I, th- I feel like those are too small. They're too tickly. No, be- I, I don't know. Maybe those. I think huh. those. I'm trying to think of why though. It's I, like I think I want to be in Cocoa Puffs. So I can eat some too. Or high nut Cheerios. I can sit like sit on it like a little donut. No, no, you're not small though. No, this is just oh a, a swimming pool pool okay, full I of cereal my and then. milk. Probably Cocoa Puffs. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want I want to eat those. Ooh, cinnamon toast crunch though. Nah, I just love those and they're flat. They're good, but I wouldn't want to hang out in those. My number one cereal. My dad likes that one too. I think he likes Cheerios more though. What? My dad likes the, Cheerios the, more. Oh, Cheerios. Yeah. Or Honey Nut Cheerios. Honey Nut Cheerios are good. No, no. My family likes Honey Bunches of Oats the most. Those are pretty great. My favorite is Honey O's. That's amazing. It's like the, it's like the, it's got like no, a I, little. I, no, no, cr- that's, that's my number three cereal, so I think. So good. I love that. I love that one. I think my, my number one is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. My number two is Cocoa Pebbles. You said your number two is Cocoa Pebbles. What was my number one? <laughs> uh, I think Honey O's. I think Honey O's, yeah. And then. One. I think your number three was my number one. Which is? Uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. How do you feel about Apple Jacks? Apple Jacks are good. They're they're good. But you, it's not like a chocolate. That's like a tangy, tarty yeah. taste. It's good. Yeah. I think of my sister. Because when we were younger, we'd go like to those Hotels of Continental Breakfasts, and she uh, always picked Apple Jacks. So that, that, to me, 
is a vacation cereal. I don't take it to my house, but I'll eat it on vacation. So two things. One, yes. grape nut O's used to be a thing. Yeah. And they're better than honey nut O's. And I feel like I've had that like maybe a, I don't remember very it, well. I don't, have, I don't have fond yeah, memories of it. I, I do. Just kinda... And two, my dad will put half honey bunches of oats and half frosted flakes because they're crunchier. Get that good that's, mix. That's, that's, a, yeah. that's a good pull. Good, 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 nice. Would you rather swim around in rice or pasta? You can choose the pasta. You can't swim in Just, it, though. There's no liquid. Or no, there you, is, but like it's not like a soup. Imagine you're inside of a bean bag. Ramen. You would rather be in ramen than rice. No, never mind. Okay, rice. What's a what's risotto? Is that rice or pasta? I'd swim in. It that. can be risotto. I would swim in risotto. Risotto. You would pick risotto. Yes. I think I would pick like a like like red Spanish rice. Ooh. Nice yeah. and warm. Sometimes it's soft. You know? Yeah. I think I pick a risotto though. Still. Would you rather swim around in chocolate or coffee? Any temperature you want. It can be an iced coffee. It can be chocolate milk. It can be melted chocolate. I think chocolate. Yeah. I think coffee is a little extreme for me and I like the smell of coffee, but no, after no, you can, it could be a cold brew. Like okay. you decide. I think still chocolate. Yeah. I swim in chocolate. I, I feel like I'd want to, but it's like thick. <sighs> That's a, yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll change my mind. But like, then, like coffee, like iced coffee, iced coffee. I'd either, I think I'd like want some kind of plunge, you know, I think I'd want to be in like chocolate milk with ice in it. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what I'd go. It's with. like frozen hot chocolate from like serendipity. What? Frozen hot chocolate and um, serendipity. Three. It's really good. I don't know what's going on here. Very delicious. But I never know what's going on here. Yeah, you don't. So. You just work here. We, yeah. And live here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have made it to the end. Yes. And you did great. I'm so tired. I don't know how you guys, what, we're at like almost three hours and yep. I'm, I'm exhausted. I don't know how you guys do this every week. Yeah, we're going to cut out just before three hours. But thank you so much for filling in. You're for welcome. For being our guest host. This is the most you'll ever hear me speak on this podcast, FYI. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, well, if I do another episode, I would probably do it with you and Rain. So I'm saying this is most yeah. you'll hear me speak in one episode. We'll do some nonsense, Tram and Plus. Okay. Who knows? Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for yes. un- understanding. But I know you guys wanted Kimmy anyway. You asked, and I, we thought it would be longer. I between uh, episodes, but here you are. I don't know if they wanted it. I just think they don't mind it. No, no, no. They said bring Kimmy back. But like, I don't think they said have Kimmy replace Rain for a week. You know, that's very specific. Well, it's also like if you ask that specifically, they're trying to kick Rain out. Yeah. Rain wasn't kicked out. I offered. I told him I'll delay. Yes. Even though we never delay. And he's like, I don't want to delay. Okay. So this was specifically because we want the listeners to have an episode on Wednesday. Yeah. That is why. And you refuse to do it alone. That would, okay, no, listen. <laughs> I would if I absolutely had to. Yes. But then it's just me talking. The reason why I'm here, by the way, is because I had an appointment that got canceled. So I was not supposed to even see you today at all. So, <laughs> what, what have I said for as long as you've known me? I don't remember. Things have a way of working themselves out. All right. We have been blessed with this opportunity. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, pal. All right. With that, what do I say? <laughs> See? It's like your rain. What do I say? I don't know what I say. He says, thank you all for listening. We'll see you next week or see you guys next week, that kind of thing. Okay. But you could do whatever you want. But All right. Thank you all. No, you got you to gotta, I gotta do it again. Okay, I do it again. With that. Thank you all for listening and for inviting me into your ears and in your hearts and for letting me speak to you for the last three hours about Disney. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for being nice in the comments. We'll see you real soon. Bye. Bye.